All right, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Uh, as usual, we, during this portion, we will read a few scriptures and then we'll draw a conclusion towards the end. Uh, if we could first start with Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, I'll give, I'll give everybody a moment to get there. Hebrews 4 and 12. All right, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 reads, it says, For the word of Elohim is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the divide, dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. A discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. So from, beginning, from the beginning of the book to the end, it, it, it shows you the heart. And the motives and intentions of mankind. And we know it, of course, we always read about in Genesis of Bear Sheep, where it talks about the heart of man was evil continually since the beginning. And we know that's why the most high brought the flood in. And we know Noah was saved in his family. So we know that the heart of man has been evil all the way back then. And it hasn't really changed much since then. So the question we have to ask ourselves is what is the intent of our heart? today uh let's read uh jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 9 jeremiah 17 9 and 10 Jeremiah 17, 9 reads, it says, the heart is deceitful, deceitful above all things and desperately sick or desperately wicked. And who can know it? And it says, Yah, I, Yah, try, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. So the Most High is only re rewarding us according to our own ways that we show him. He searches the hearts based on what's in our hearts, which he already knows that's the intentions of our hearts. It says the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick or wicked, which we just covered with Genesis chapter six, where it talks about man's heart only being even continually. So we have to continuously examine what is the intent of our heart. We cannot fool uh, the most high thinking that we can get over on him when he already knows the end result of our actions. That's why he's re rewarding us according to our own doings. But as it says in Ezekiel, we always say that the, the ways of the Most High are not fair. But he's only given us what we give unto him. So let's read last place, Luke chapter 18. Luke 18, and I'm going to read, start at verse 9 when you get there. Luke 18 and 9 reads, it says, and he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up into the temple to pray, one, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, Elim, I thank you that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, even as this publican. I fast twice in a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, Elohim, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man 
went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalts himself shall be a base, and he that humbles himself shall be exalted. So we can see the the contrast in behavior between the intents of both of these two men as they went into the temple to pray. Uh, the Pharisee has more covered a lesson on Pharisees. This particular Pharisee was, in his prayer, he went to the temple to point the finger at everyone else's faults, but he never mentioned anything about his own faults, about how he he thinks uh, like he's not other men and names all the sins that other men were doing by, in his own self-righteous deeds. But the publican just, just basically said, have mercy upon me. So we can see the intention of his heart. And who do you think the Most High would have more mercy on? The man who went into the temple boasting and pointing at other men's faults or the one who just had said, have mercy upon me. So as I was saying about the intents of the heart. So we can see that this publican had a humble heart. You know, it was no extra other than other than be merciful upon me. He didn't go in with this long extravagant prayers like the Republican did, but he just said, have mercy upon me. So again, we have to ask ourselves, what is the intent of our heart in this day and age? But we know that the heart of man has been continuously evil, but what does the heart of us look like? Do we have a heart more like the publican or do we have a heart more like this Pharisee in this parable? And that's just something to think about and I'll yield at this point. I'll yield. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All praise and esteem to the most high. May his name be esteemed always and forevermore. Um, and Mr. Bakar, that is uh, definitely another good uh, two-minute presentation uh, by Don Knakia, because uh, this, this word is sharper than any two-edged sword, and it reveals the intent and the purpose of the hearts of men. And so, um, you know, uh, a lot of people want to say, uh, you know, you've heard the term before, the Most High knows my heart, or in the church they would say, God knows my heart. The question would actually be, as, as he was saying, do we know our own hearts? And instead of us being puffed up in judgment of others, like, you know, as we covered last week in the lesson, uh, we should actually be focusing on having a ministry of reconciliation, uh, you know, and it shouldn't be that we just want to be judgmental to everyone, but it's showing others how to be reconciled to the Most High and how to prepare their hearts to be received uh, of the Most High, to be filled with the Most High's words so that they can repent and be received of the Most High. So um, please let us all be mindful of this warning that we're not always uh, in others uh, uh, space judging them while we should be actually trying to learn what it is that we need to be doing right in the sight of the Most High so that we may be delivered. So with that, I give all praise, honor, esteem, Toda Rabbah Adon uh, for your words, Toda Rabbah for your words, all praise, all honor, all esteem to the Most High. May his name be esteemed. Um, at this time, we're gonna get ready to open the floor for uh, praise, uh, for the praise and testimonies. Um, if anyone has any, Zakin Yaquab, I'm going to ask, are you in a position where you could host for a few moments? I need to step away just for a moment. Okay, Maury. Okay, if you would, Zakin, we will open the floor for praise and worship. I will return. Okay. All right, Ms. Bacard, this is the praise and worship um, session. Um, anybody with praise or worship or testimony on their heart, um, just, just raise your hand and we'll acknowledge it. Shabbat Shalom, my new Kirk. I see your hand. The floor is yours. Shabbat Shalom. I'd like, just like to give the honor to the Most High. Yeah, and I just thank and praise Him for all He's done in my life. I thank and praise Him for the time I, I was born and up until the time I'm here today. And I just thank and praise y'all that let me live to see 70 years. And I just thank and praise y'all because I uh, think about my twin. She died at 63. And and I uh, thank y'all because he still yet have me here. And I just thank and praise y'all for all his goodness and his mercy and his kindness. And I thank y'all for all the, the teaching and the, the uh, uh, word that's coming forth now to let us know our shortcomings and where we need to be at today because this is a warning to me. And I just thank and praise y'all because he has been such a merciful and kind, yeah. And he looks, uh, he looks over our faults. And I just thank him because if it had not been for him that was on my side, where would I be at today? 
I just thank and praise y'all for my husband and, and my uh, family. And I just thank and praise him because without him, I would be nothing. I couldn't do anything. Toda. I yield. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Toda Rabba for that testimony uh, and that praise to the Most High, uh, Ima. You know, and, and, and the Most High is the source of our life. And, and, and we say, Toda Rabba for your life. Toda Rabba Abba for, for your life and your wisdom and your experiences. The Most High has blessed you with. Toda Rabba. Um, Adon Mikael, Shabbat Shalom, floor is yours. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, Yahuwah is worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, Yahuwah is worthy to be praised. Come on, y'all. Sing hallelujah, hallelujah. Yahuwah is worthy to be praised. Sing hallelujah, hallelujah. Yahuwah is worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, Yahuwah is worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, Yahuwah is worthy to be praised. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yahuwah is worthy to be praised. Sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yahuwah is worthy to be praised. From the rising, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, Yahuwah is worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, Yahuwah is worthy praise. Sing hallelujah, hallelujah. Yahuwah is worthy to be praised. Sing hallelujah, hallelujah. Yahuwah is worthy to be praised. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yahuwah is worthy to be praised. Sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yahuwah is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. 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 I just want to give the most high praise and honor. The joy of Yahuwah is our strength. Hallelujah. I yield. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I told God for the song. Told God for the song. Though. Hallelujah. Always worthy to be praised. Um, Ima Shoshana, Shabbat Shalom. The floor is yours. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, Yahuwah is worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, Yahuwah is worthy to be praised. Sing hallelujah. Hallelujah, Yahuwah is worthy to be praised. Sing hallelujah, hallelujah, Yahuwah is worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, Yahuwah is worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, Yahuwah is worthy to be praised. Sing hallelujah, hallelujah, Yahuwah is worthy to be praised. Sing hallelujah, hallelujah. Yahuwah is worthy to be praised. Sing hallelujah, hallelujah. Yahuwah is worthy to be praised. 
sing hallelujah, hallelujah. Yahuwah is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. 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 He is worthy to be praised. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Yah is worthy to be praised. I yield. Hallelujah. 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 Toda Ima. Toda Rabah. Uh, Don Shashamar, floor is yours. Shabbat shalom. Shalom, shalom, shabbat shalom. Can I be heard? Dan, can we hear you? Can, I just want to give all praise to the most high. I don't want to sing praise to him, you know, because, you know, y'all is good and his mercy endures forever and ever. So I want to send up praise on behalf of my, my Abba. All right. We worship Yah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. We worship Yah, who He is. We worship Yah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. We worship Yah. For who he is, we worship the King. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. We worship the King. For who he is, we worship Yah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship Yah for who He is. We worship the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship the King for what He does. We worship Yah, hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship the King for who He is. I yield all praise to the Most High Yahweh. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Toda Reba for that song, Toda Reba, Toda Reba. Um, Ima Audrey, Shabbat Shalom, the floor is yours. Shabbat Shalom. I'm a little stuffy, but I want to attempt to sing a worship song this morning. I will come and bow down at your feet, Yahuwah. In your presence is fullness of joy. There is nothing, there is no one who compares with you. I take pleasure in worshiping you, Yah. I will come and bow down at your feet, Yahuwah. In your presence is fullness of joy. There is nothing, there is no one who compares with you. I take pleasure in worshiping. I take pleasure in worshiping. I take pleasure in worshiping you, Yah. There is nothing, there is no one who compares with you. I take pleasure in worshiping you, Yah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. So beautiful, Ima. Hallelujah. I told out for that song. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, Coach T. Anastasia, Shabbat Shalom. Floor is yours. Shabbat Shalom. Yah is excellent. Yah is excellent. Yah is excellent and worthy of all praise. Yah is excellent. Yah is excellent. Yah is excellent and worthy of all praise. Elohim. For whom I live with all the strength you give, I will worship you for all my days. Cause Yah is excellent. Yah is excellent. Yah is excellent and worthy of all praise. Hold on, yeah. Hallelujah. 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 I got to say, I, I, I have to believe the most high is pleased with our worship and our praise. I, I, I got to believe that. It's so beautiful. This is what Shabbat means to me, you know, us coming together and, and, and lifting the most high's name on high. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, Mimi iPhone, uh, the floor is yours. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. I'm, I just want to say that I thank Yahuwah for this past week, you know, with this storm coming. And I'm on the ground floor, and usually when they talk about flooding, my nerves go crazy because I'm like, okay, what if it floods and everything I have, you know, gets ruined? But this time, I didn't worry. I didn't worry at all. I'm in a different place where I was from last year. So I didn't worry every time it rained. I did not worry when it was time to take my baby out to walk her. I walked her and I came back in and I didn't worry when I said my prayers. I had add a little protection prayer in there because of the storm. And that was it. And guess what? I was here all by myself and I wasn't even worried. Well, really, I wasn't alone because I had somebody with me looking after me, you know. So I, I thanked him for that. I yield. Hallelujah for that testimony. Hallelujah. And that's what the word and the faith and the obedience and all of that um that 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 we strive for, that's what it does. It 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 removes a lot of that worry and that doubt. And so Toda, Toda for your testimony. Toda for your testimony. Faith in the most high's promises. If we are obedient, he says all the things that he will do for us. You know, so hallelujah for the testimony. Um, a Koti Yasmin, floor is yours. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, like Um, want to give all praise hey. and thank to the Most High for uh, another. I speak, uh, Koti, you had to go on um, mute. I was trying to mute the person that didn't mute my on mute. You had to mute. Oh, can't, can't, so that. Um, just want to give all praise to the most high for uh life um for the opportunity to uh be amongst a uh, beautiful fellowship again i do have a song um that i would like to share um here we go. <clears throat> as the days of noah can you keep us safe and dry because we don't want you to ever pass us by as the days of noah can you keep us safe and dry because we don't want you to ever 
pass us by as the days of Noah and you keep us safe and dry because we don't want you to ever pass us by as the days of Noah and you keep us safe and dry because we don't want you to ever pass us by. I pray that the Most High shows mercy toward us as we ever hold on to his word and um, stay repentant and um, trust in him and may he be praised forever. Shalom. I yield. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Beautiful song, Akoti. Toda Reba. Toda Reba. Akoti Talia. Shabbat Shalom. Floor is yours. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, family. I praise Yah for his grace and his mercy and his long suffering. And I praise Yah for everyone life tonight, today on this call. And I want to sing a song to praise the Most High. <laughs> to you along, all praises, Yahweh. To you along, all worthy, Yahweh. Sometimes I feel like the world is crumbling down. Sometimes I feel like my way cannot be found. Then I remember you still on your throne. Then I remember. Yahweh Shah will bring me home. To you alone, all praises, Yahweh. To you alone, all praises, Yahweh. You are worthy of all praise. Worthy of all praise, worthy of all praise, Yahweh. You are worthy of all praise, worthy of all praise, worthy of all praise, Yahweh. For you alone are praises, Yahweh. To you alone are worthy, Yahweh. Whenever I feel like my world is crumbling down. Whenever I feel like my way cannot be found. Then I remember you still on your throne. Then I remember Yahweh Shah will bring me on. You are worthy of all praise, worthy of all praise, worthy of all praise, Yahweh. You are worthy of all praise, worthy of all praises, worthy of all praise, Yahweh. To you alone are worthy, Yahweh. To you belong. Oh, praises, Yahweh. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise be to Yahweh. To him alone are worthy and all praises. Hallelujah. 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 To the most high and the most high alone. Hallelujah. Told out for the song of Koti. Uh, Koti Willie, the Shabbat Shalom, the floor is yours, and you'll be the last one. Shabbat Shalom. I just want to make a declare. That Yah is my keeper. I want to make a declare that Yah is my strong tower. I want to make a declare that He is my present help in time of trouble. And I thank Yah 
for being able to walk through my home and just give Yah praise and honor for who he is to me. I want to thank Yah for providing for me. I want to declare that Yahuwah is my provider and that I have everything that I need in him. I yield. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Toda, Toda for that testimony, um, uh, uh, Koti, um, and, and your faith in the most high. Hallelujah. Toda Reba for that testimony. Um I turn the floor back over now to uh Maurice Mott. Maurice Mott, floor is yours. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise and esteem to the most high Yah. May his name be esteemed always and forevermore. At this time, I want to say, Barukata Abiyah Malak Haolam, that is blessed to you, Yahuwah, our King, King everlasting. Father, we give you all praise, honor, and esteem, and we thank you for this Shabbat day. We thank you for the day in which you created for man to rest and to study your word and to be replenished, to be healed, to be delivered, to be set free from bondage of false doctrine. Father, we thank you for your set apart word in which you left your instructions, your law, statutes, your commandments that are perfectly written, Father, that was perfectly appointed from the beginning of the time for your children, your set-apart people, to teach us how to live a life of righteousness, a life that is set apart unto you, that we can be a peculiar people unto you, Abba, those who you will love because we keep your commandments, those whom you love, Abba, because you have created us for the whole purpose of serving you, worshiping you, and keeping your commandments. Father, we thank you who are a perfect Elohim, who has, has no fault, all faults that are in the earth, Abba, has nothing to do with you creating the creation. It has to do with our faults, Abba, of not being obedient to your commands, of us being selfish individuals, leaning to our own understanding. But Father, we thank you who are merciful, for you are a merciful creator. You are a merciful father. You're so considerate of your children who you have left a way back into you, a way to salvation. You are Elohim that keeps covenant with your people. You made a covenant with Abraham, Abba, to be an Elohim or a power unto his people, his children after him, if we would keep your commands. So, Father, we thank you that you did not forget your covenant and that you are keeping the covenant, though we, Abba, have made a mess of our way. But we thank you, merciful Father, who has given us the opportunity to return it to the way which is righteous. Father, we ask if you will purge our hearts of idolatry, witchcraft, sin, iniquity, all manners of evil, Abba. We ask if you will humble our hearts, Abba. Prepare us to receive your word and give us true understanding of your word and write your words on our heart, Abba, that we would never depart again. Father, we thank you for those whom you sent from Noah to Moshe, Abraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov, Malek Dawid. We thank you, Abba, for Yahushua HaMashiach and all the sent ones, Abba, who Live the righteous life to show us how to live righteous unto you, O Yah. We thank you for the righteous forefathers and mothers, Abba, who called upon your name, who believed in your name, who trusted in you. We also thank you for the written word that you've shown that even for our forefathers who was wicked, Abba, whom you've actually destroyed for their wickedness, we thank you for the recording and we thank you for the fear that it should provoke in us, Abba, that we will not make the same mistakes as they. Father, we ask if you will increase in us our faith, our obedience unto you, that we will no longer walk in disobedience. Father, we praise you, we honor, and we esteem your name. We thank you for this Shabbat day, a day in which you created for man to rest, a day in which you created for man to worship you. So, Father, we give you all praise, all honor, all esteem. Baruch atah Yahuwah, Baruch Hashem Yahuwah, Baruch Habab Hashem Yahuwah. Blessed are you, Yah. Blessed is your name, Yah, and blessed is he who comes to your name, Yah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, so be it. We now have the reading of the mitzvah, the reading of the commandments by Adon Kanakia. Coming from the book of Exodus of Shemot, chapter 20. Shemot, Exodus 20. And Elohim spake all these words, saying, I'm Yahlohim, which you brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no Elohim before me. You shall not make it to any graven image, any likeness of anything in the heaven above, and the earth beneath, or in the water under the earth. 
You should not bow down yourself to them nor serve them. For I, Elohim, made jealous, El, visit iniquity of the fathers upon the children, unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and show mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. You should not take the name of Elohim in vain, for Yah will not hold them guiltless to take his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Six days shall you labor and do all your work. But the seventh day of the Sabbath of Elohim, in it you should not do any work, you, nor your son, nor your daughter, your manservant, nor your maidservant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger that is within your gates. For six days I made the heaven and earth to see and all the mist, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore, y'all bless the Sabbath and holiday. Honor your father and your mother that your days may be long upon the land which Elohim gives you. You should not murder. You should not commit adultery. You should not steal. You should not bear false witness against your neighbor. You should not covet your neighbor's house. You should not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maid, sir, nor his ox, nor his donkey, nor anything that is your neighbor's. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Shema Yisrael Yahweh Eloheinu Yahweh Akkad, wa chabata et Yahweh Eloheka, buka lababaka ubeko nefeshka ubeko miodeka, wa hayu hadabarim ha'ala asha anoki mitzvuka hayom alababaka. Hear, O Israel, Yahuwah, our Elohim, Yah is one. And you shall love Yahuwah, your Elohim, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. And these words that I command you this day shall be in your lips, shall be in your heart. Hallelujah, hallelujah, so be it. All right, Shabbat Shalom. Once again, Mishpachah, Shabbat Shalom. Um, we just finished our series uh, last week. Um, we've been covering for the past couple of months uh, the teaching on repentance, forgiveness, and reconciliation. Uh, repentance, forgiveness, and reconciliation. And one of the things that we highlighted uh, last week was about being reconciled to the Father. Um, Israel itself as a nation and we as individuals, we need to be reconciled to the Most High. And the reason why we were separate from the Most High was because of sins and iniquities. And so we need to be reconciled to our Father. And there's a process of, of returning to that point of reconciliation. And it, it starts with repentance. Uh, uh, then the Father will give us forgiveness if we repent properly. And then we can be reconciled into the Most High. And all throughout his word, throughout the Torah, he gives instructions of how we also to uh, forgive one another, uh, to how we were to repent one towards another. He has instructions on that as well. And as we covered last week, we should have the ministry of reconciliation. So it should never be that we who are servants of the Most High are these venomous people that are full of unforgiveness uh, and non-forgiveness. We don't want to forgive anyone. We don't ever want to be reconciled because in order for us to probably be reconciled to the Most High, we have to do the things necessary to be reconciled to Him. And part of those things that we need to do is sometimes we'll do what? Be able to be reconciled one to another. So we want to focus on today where we was coming from, from the Torah portion, from the book of Deuteronomy, right? So the reason why we had to be reconciled anyway was because our forefathers sinned and they did horrible, uh, horrible, idolatrous acts and disbelief and all those things against the creator. So in order to be reconciled, I can't, Yaqua put something in the messenger earlier about we should be learning from what we're going through now. We should learn from the examples of our forefathers and we should now embrace the commandments of the most high so that we do not need to actually be forgiven later in life. We don't need to be punished again for the same things because we're remaining in the truth. We're remaining in the favor of the Most High, we return to him. He's reconciled us and we should remain with Yah. We should no longer go away from the Most High. So I want to start going to a lesson today that we've already started on. And we'll be starting today in the book of Hebrews chapter three. Hebrews chapter three and one. So one of the main things that we need to keep us from stumbling ever again is to have a, a true obedience and true faith. And I know faith is a word that we use loosely. Sometimes we all say we have faith and we all say we believe. And we've heard these lessons before, but we've read today and we've had a lot of discussions today from our reading of the book of Deborah, commonly called Deuteronomy um, chapter one. And we've seen how disbelief of our forefathers caused some of them to be killed in the wilderness and they never made it to the promised land. And so though we're reading the word and we say we understand the word, we really, really need to start understanding what can actually separate us from the Most High. It's not only just the horrible sins, but it's also doubting the Most High and who he is, his word, what he says he will do, what he can do. Us lacking that belief in the Most High can also be a thing that calls us to miss the mark. So we're going to start with the book of Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 1, Kanakia, Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 1.
Hebrews 3 and 1. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Shiach Yahusha, who was faithful to him that appointed him, as also Moses was faithful in all his house. Okay, so I want to stop here for one quick moment. So we're seeing that Yahusha, the Mashiach, is being compared to Moshe, right? It says, who was faithful to him that appointed him, as also Moshe was faithful in all his house. So it's given a comparison that Yahusha was faithful to the Most High, as was Moshe, as was Moses. So when we go back to the Torah and the Tanakh, we can see how was Moses faithful to the Most High. Whatsoever the Most High commanded Moses, Moses did what the Most High commanded him to do. Moses was a teacher of the law of the Most High. Whatever the Most High commanded for Israel to learn, Moses taught them these things. And so now Yahusha is actually being compared to Moses, that he had the same level of faithfulness towards the Most High as Moses had. So with that being said, a question that should come to our minds is, do we have the faithfulness as Moses had? What was that faithfulness? What did it look like? And do we even follow the writings of Moses? Are we even following the writings or the, the, the things written of the Mashiach who actually followed the writings that Moses followed, which were the writings of the Most High, which were the commandments, right? And how they faithfully, wholeheartedly believed and trusted in that which the Most High commanded them. That is what made them set apart into the Most High, right? So that, the verse one said, wherefore, set apart brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle in Greek is what they have here, apostolos, which is going to be Greek in Hebrew, it would be shalat, which is going to be a messenger, a sent one, from the word apostolos in Greek, it's going to be a delegate. It's going to be an ambassador. A messenger comes also. So a lot of times when we look at these terms, we're looking at these terms as someone that wants to be noticed as someone big and, and mighty in the church. But these terms have function, right? So uh, so Moses was pretty much a shalak or a sent one or an apostle to the people at his time. And it's saying that Yahusha was also an apostle or a sent one, a messenger, ambassador, one who stands in the place of the Most High to bring forth the word of the Most High to the people of the Most High, to let the children of the Most High know what righteousness is, what the requirements of the Heavenly Father is for us to obey, that we may be saved, that we may be a part of his set-apart kingdom, right? So it says, uh, so uh, wherefore, set-apart brethren, partakes of the heavenly calling, consider the shalak or the apostle, and high priest of our confession, Yahushua HaMashiach, who was faithful to him that appointed him, as also Moshe was faithful in all his house. So it said, who was faithful to him that appointed him. So one cannot say that they are a messenger of the Most High if the Most High didn't appoint them. One cannot say they are a messenger of the Most High if they're not teaching the doctrine or the instructions or the Torah or the laws when they don't live by those things that the Most High whom is the one who appoints his messengers to come speak on his behalf, to be the ambassador that speak in his name. So again, who was faithful to him that appointed him as also Moshe was faithful in all his house. Verse three, Aki. Well, this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses inasmuch as he who have built the house had more honor than the house. For every house is built by some man, but he that built all things of him. And Moses was ver and verily was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken after. But Mashiach has a son over his own house, whose Pause house for are... Pause for a second, one second, Kanaka. I have a question, Mr. McCall. What is a testimony? Can anyone say what, what does testimony mean to you? What is a testimony? I think, <clears throat> Slika, Shabbat Shalom. I think a, a testimony is something that you vision and you witness. Um, so you can say, okay, I witnessed this, so I know that this to be true, and I yield. Okay, so it's something that you witness, a vision that there's something to be true. Godal Lakoti Willing? I agree that something that you witness uh, and something that you have gone through yourself. Okay, you said something that you witnessed, something you're going through yourself, Miss Peggy? Shabbat Shalom. Yes, for me, it means uh, being saved, uh, recognizing that there is a change in your life and uh, who's responsible for that change. 
So we stand up, we, we get baptized, we show that there has been a, a significant change in our lives and we're ready to live uh, according as the Messiah set rules to. That, that's how I feel about that. I, I rest. Okay. Uh, Don Shashamar? Yeah, I would say um, evidence or proof. That's what I think of when it comes to testimony. Evidence or proof of something or someone. I yell. Evidence or proof? Adon Jarvis. And Ms. Mimi is going to be the last one on this, this particular one. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, any, any experience that you go through that builds faith? I yield. Experience that you go through to build faith? Okay. And Ms. Mimi? I think um, it's something that, that Yah has done for you. And um, of course, it's always something that leads to a positive and which what makes you want to give your testimony to other people to let them know what Yah has done for you. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to go to the definition for testimony just from, uh, from uh, uh, a dictionary. Um, it says testimony. A formal written or spoken statement, especially one given in a court of law, it says evidence or proof provided by the existence or appearance of something. Evidence or proof provided by the existence or appearance of something. All right. So, uh, uh, and they got to have another one. It says a public recounting of a religious conversion or experience. So it goes into more definitions, but. Uh, I want to build on the grounds of evidence or proof provided by the existence or appearance of something. All right. So that's just testimony. It says evidence. All right. So now I'm going back. It says, uh, and Moses verily was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were spoken, were to be spoken after. So what it's saying is Moses, who was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony or a witness or something that we can gauge what something looks like. He's the proof of he's the proof of something. So Moses was the one that was given the Torah to Mosiah. Moses spoke directly to the Mosiah. Moses was actually faithful to the Mosiah. It is a recording written of the life of Moshe and how he taught Torah, how he believed everything the Most High said, and how he actually walked in the faith to the Most High. And so now it says Moses barely was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony, for evidence of those things which were to be spoken after. So Moshe is going to be what? One that's going to be evidence or a testimony or some form of evidence of things which are going to be spoken after his time. Verse 6, Kanakia. But Mashiach has a son over his own house, whose house are we, if we hold no, yeah. fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm until the end. Continue wherefore, reading. wherefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works 40 years. Okay, so we're coming here today because what I want to show is the parallel between the uh, the Tanakh, which is the Old Testament, as well as the Brit Kadashah of the New Testament. There's things that's taken out of context when reading from a church perspective, and when a doctrine is being taught from a church perspective of modern theology, um, from modern theology, and not actually based upon the historical recording of the word with the proper understanding of actually the Tanakh, which is going to be a form of testimony. So everything that's written in the Tanakh is going to be a testimony as well, because it is evidence of the things or the historical recordings of things that took place. So now anything that comes after, we have to know the testimony of those things that was written aforetime, which was written for our learning. So it says, wherefore, as the set apart spirit said today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness. All right. So uh, as elders say, always look at words that you know that you know, and I already know y'all know what the word provocation mean, but uh, provocation, I'm just going to give a, a definition. It says action or speech that makes someone annoyed or angry. It says an action or speech that makes someone annoyed or angry provocation. 
especially deliberately. It says, especially deliberately. So this is when you provoke someone. So it says, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness. This is giving us a timeline. This is giving us a testimony or evidence of something that we can go back and read to get an understanding of what's being said in the present time of this day and age when they was reading it and also what we're reading off the pages in our modern time to understand what this actually is saying. So there was a time period by testimony of how our ancient forefathers lived either obedient or disobedient to the word of the most high. So it says, harden not your hearts as in the provocation. So this is something, don't do as something that was already done as the provocation when? In the day of temptation in the wilderness. So this is now referring back to the book called by Midbar in Hebrew, which is in the wilderness or which is commonly called the book of Numbers um, in, uh, in, the, in, in, the, in, the, in the English rendering, in the wilderness, but it's referring back to a time period when the children of Israel lived in the wilderness, right? When it was in the wilderness. And we know that the ambassador at that time who was righteous and who was just and who was faithful and it's saying by his testimony, which is talking about Moshe, he was right. So it's telling us to reflect back on the life of Moshe. It is telling us that Yahusha was going to live uh, faithful, as faithful as Moshe did. And he was to have even more honor than Moshe, but he was compared to Moshe. And I was telling us that we harden not our hearts as in the provocation when Israel provoked the most high in the day of temptation in the wilderness. But so many of us are told not to read the Old Testament. You have to read the testimonies. If you don't read the testimonies, you cannot probably understand what's being conveyed when you read the New Testament, nor will you be able to identify the errors or the things that's inserted when men are trying to get us to be succumb to or subscribe to a certain false doctrine or false way of worship or a form of idolatry, right? So harden not your hearts as in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness. That's a timeline, a time period, which will say we need to go and research this time period. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works 40 years. So we know that the children of Israel was in the wilderness how long? 40 years. So it is actually talking about a very ancient time period here, referring back to something that we are told not to read because the Old Testament is done away with. How would the Old Testament be done away with when the Brit Kadasha? commonly called the New Testament, is always referring to the most monumental thing that has ever happened in Israel's history. It is them being delivered from Egypt to be brought into the Most High. That's where the story of Israel pretty much, not the full start, but it's where the actual, where it really starts, where it gives you the real of what happened, what displeased the Most High. Why would you die and not be able to receive salvation to come into the Promised Land? All those things was taking place in the wilderness. We go back and we, it's always referring to Moshe. What was Moshe up against? So going into statements that was made earlier when we was going into our Torah reading, when we talk about uh, putting problems before the Most High, Moshe had a very big problem. Pharaoh, the leader of the army, the leader of Egypt. But he did not fear Pharaoh. Why? Because the Most High told him to do what? To go and tell Pharaoh to let my people go so that they may come and serve me. They're no longer going to be Pharaoh servants. They need to come and serve me, not man, but me. And Moses had to be bold enough and had to be faithful enough to trust the most high enough to go unto a king or a Pharaoh who could have his life and have him put to death and challenge him by saying, let Israel go. that They may go and serve Yah. So when it says Moses was faithful, he didn't allow Pharaoh to be his downfall. He went. Now, we do know there was some questions before when Moses was trying to go through the process, but it in end story is Moses did what the Most High commanded him to do. He went back. So now this time period that was monumental in Israel's history was Israel being delivered, and what did they do when they were delivered? This is very key, because what they did when they was delivered and reconciled to the Most High, that's going to be key, because they were in the wilderness. Shlika, they were in Egypt first before being brought into the mount to be given the instructions and in the wilderness process for them to actually get to go to a point of being reconciled to the Most High to be brought into the land of their possession, the land that the Most High promised to them. But while they were in the wilderness, being brought to a place to, of salvation, 
The only thing they did was complain. They provoked the most high with their words. They provoked the most high with their actions. They anger and they troubled the most high. And we just read about that earlier. They did not trust the most high. So this very thing separated them from their salvation, not believing in and not trusting the most high with all their heart. It said, when your fathers tipped me, proved me, <clears throat> sneak out, and saw me, saw my works 40 years. So for 40 years, they saw what I did. They seen what the most high did to Pharaoh. They seen all the plagues that touched Egypt. They seen how they dwelt in the land of Goshen and nothing came upon them. When ever natural disaster, what, we're at, what we would commonly call today natural disaster, but when Yah brings destruction on the land that's commonly coined natural disasters, whatever hit Egypt did not touch them. Yah always protected and provided them, provided for them, and he also brought them out of that place to bring them to himself, and they feared to still obey his word, and instead of remembering all that the Most High had already done for them, they were complaining and they provoked the most high to anger in the wilderness. It said they proved me or they tried him and they saw my works for 40 years. I've proven myself to them, yet they still did not obey. Verse 10, I keep. Wherefore, I was grieved with that generation and said, they, all, they do always err in their heart and they have not known my ways. Love it when a plan comes together. What was Kanakya's two minute warning about today? <laughs> about our heart. And that, that this word is sharper than any two edged sword, and it reveals the intent and the purpose of the hearts of men. And he, he told us that we need to check our hearts, right? So it says, Wherefore I was grieved, meaning the most high, with that generation. As I can, Yaqua broke down the generations, how there was the younger generation that was able to come into the land. And the older generation who did not purge themselves of idolatry, disbelief, and their wickedness. So therefore, they died in the wilderness and they were not brought into the set-apart land. Why? Because that generation grieved Yah. They provoked him to anger and said they do err in their what? In their heart, in their mind, in their thought process, in how they think something should be, in their doubt, in the, in the way they... Uh, feel something to be. So when we say heart, we're not talking about the vessel that pumps blood. So as uh, Kanaka went into how man's heart was evil continually. So he said, and it's the same thing today, how man's heart is continually evilly. We seen it from the very beginning during Noah's day it was evil continually. It didn't even when Israel was brought forth from Egypt and delivered and brought to the wilderness to be brought to the most high, to be returned to the most high, to have a relationship with the most high. They still had evil hearts. They didn't fully trust they still did their own thing. They, Though they seen what the Most High did, they still did not fully submit to the will of the Most High. So it said, wherefore, I was grieved with that generation and said, they do always err, always. Like, when are they going to get it right? They do always err in their heart and they have not known my ways. They've seen his ways. They know what he could do, but they do not choose to obtain or to know or to retain Yah's ways in their heart. They do not choose to want to walk according to what the Most High says do. They, they desire to do things their own way. And so it already gave us a timeline and it gave us something to go back and research. And we read about a portion of this today. We read Deuteronomy chapter one, when it says the Most High told them to go in and obtain the land and they brought back a bad report. So because they did not have faith, it angered the Most High. And so therefore they died in the wilderness because they provoked them to anger. I've shown you all these 40 years in the wilderness and before the 40 years in the wilderness, when I freed you from Israel and y'all still are not going to obey my commands, you still don't trust me? You still don't believe? So that is the reason why many of our forefathers and mothers did not make it into the promised land. Why is this so key? Because we can teach all the lessons we want about repentance, forgiveness and reconciliation, but if we don't know how to have faith in the most high, we can't be probably reconciled either because faith will be something that's going to produce an action in us of obeying the most high. If we believe and totally trust that the most high's word is what it is and what he says is what it is, then our even now our faith will provoke us to do an action and we stand firm on that action, not wavering, not moving, not being cast to and fro. We will stand firm in our actions. But if we don't truly trust the Most High, 
That's the reason why people move all over the place and move themselves back into a place of being what? On the most high's bad side, not trusting the most high. So it don't always have to be, we have to be in the largest form of idolatry or the worst form of idolatry possible. It can just simply be when the most high tells us to do something as we read earlier in Deborah Deuteronomy, the first chapter. Because you did not go into the land, when I told you to go into the land, I'm no longer with you. And what did the people say? Well, oh, no, no, we're going to go. We're going to go now. And then the most I said, what? Don't go. Don't go now. I'm not with you. So as we've covered, we need to trust the most high because the most high gets angry when we don't listen. When we don't listen, the most high gets angry with us. And his wrath may touch us when we don't listen. So it says, wherefore, I was grieved with that generation and said, they do not, they do always err in their heart. We always lean to our own understanding. And they have not known my ways. Pick up in verse 11, Aki. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. That's very key because he's telling us in the Brit Kadashah in the New Testament, in the book of Hebrews, to refer back to a time in history. Go back to a testimony. See Moshe's testimony and the righteousness and how he stood because there's one who's coming after him, which is Yahusha and other other apostles that were sent that brought forth the word of the Most High that stood and they were prophets like unto Moshe. So now it's saying that the Mashiach or Yahusha was going to be as faithful as Moshe. So that gives us a, a, a picture to look at. What did Moses stand for? Why was he considered faithful to the Most High? What did he do? How did he live? What law, statutes, commandments did he keep? Did he say, I believe in the Most High and say the law is done away with? Would Moses ever teach something like that? So if the Messiah or Yahusha was the same as Moses, would he ever tell you to believe in him and the law is done away with? No, he would not. Because they say he's faithful like Moshe. And he himself even said, I don't come to speak my own words, but what? My father who sent me, who left Moshe the words so the Mashiach came to speak the same words that Moses was already speaking. He came to now teach the new generation or another generation because there was in, be, be, between the time of Moses and the time of Yahusha, as it was from the time of Moses into the time of the wilderness to Joshua leading the children of Israel into the promised land, there's people who died off of disobedience and not following the instructions. And then there's other generation that came that still had to be taught. So the Mashiach, the Yahusha, was also teaching the same level of righteousness the same words that Moses was teaching, but he was also giving an example of what it looks like to truly walk in the law, statute, commandments of the Most High and how to have faith in Yah. And what it looks like when you have total faith in the Most High and you totally trust in the Most High. So it says, so wherefore I was grieved with that generation. So I swear in my wrath, they will shall not enter into my rest. And so my question was, why is this key? Because it lets you know that there was a time period that has a testimony attached to that time period in history to let us be able to go back to see what was done during that day and age and it's why it's being spoken in this day and age and what we're supposed to interpret from it. Why didn't they make it? They didn't trust Yah. Why didn't they make it? They was murmuring and complaining. Why didn't they make it? They would rather lean to their own understanding and, and, and instead of what the Most High says. Why didn't they make it? Why didn't they enter into their rest? Why didn't they enter into the promised land? Why didn't they enter? Because they still had idolatry. Why didn't they make it? They still didn't want to listen to the Shalak or the sent one that was sent, which is Moshe, because some of Moses' very own brethren wanted to rise up against him of the priesthood. They want to still do their own. They want to do their own thing. It's so many things that we can learn that took place in the wilderness. And those things, as it says in the Brick Kadasha, what was written four times written for our learning. There's no way possible for us to know how to truly be reconciled to the Most High if we don't know what faith in Yah looks like. If we don't know what obedience to Yah looks like. If we don't know what obedient, what we are to be obedient to. If we don't know what it looks like in, in history, when the Most High said, I was angry and I'm going to destroy someone for not doing certain things. And therefore, they will not enter. So now if we want to enter into rest, we should be going back to the Tanakh and finding out what exactly took place. 
We've already read a portion of it today in Deuteronomy by saying they simply did not trust Yah, did not believe, and they leaned to their own understanding. When the Most High gave commandment, they did not do what the Most High commanded. And when they wanted to actually try to return to the Most High, then they said, we're going to do it now. But the Most High had already commanded them when to do something, and they didn't believe. They complained about uh, the large people in the land, the sons of the Anakim, they complained about the walls being built up. We can't come. And they caused the rest of Israel to be discouraged in following the commands of the Most High. What is it when people are telling us today that the laws cannot be kept? That the laws are being done away with? They're discouraging people from keeping the commands of the Most High, which is the same thing our forefathers did in the wilderness. The Most High commanded, they said, we can't do it. So now people are teaching in churches, we can't keep these commandments. They're discouraging people from doing the commands of the Most High. That's the reason why they didn't make it into the promised land. So it says, they shall not enter into my rest. So we have to study this history ourselves and get a more clear understanding of words such as Adon uh, uh, Mikael, I think, and Adon Uziel, uh, no, uh, 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 Gadol Akutu Walim, and Adon Uziel brought out such as words such as presumptuous getting a more clear understanding of what these words mean and, and, and are we actually presumptuous and just moving on our own will and being overconfident in our sin instead of being confident and walking righteous when the Most High tells us to do something? Are we still living in the fact that I'm an Israelite so the Most High is with me and the Most High may not even be with us because we're not doing what we're supposed to do? Because we can see that according to the testimony that's written in the Tanakh, the Most High is not with the elders anymore. Why? Because they did not walk with Yah. So you can be an Israelite, and it does not mean the Most High is walking with you still. Just because you're an Israelite, you have to be an obedient Israelite. You have to be a Yah-fearing Israelite. You have to be a faithful Israelite. Pick up in verse 12. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living Elohim. See how they refer to uh refer to a heart of unbelief? The most high referred to that as an evil heart. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief. Take heed to what? To what was already written before time for our learning. Now do you see why I made a statement last night about this crafty council? It is crafty council that Philistines, Israelites, Moabites, Ammonites, many, Zidot, many different Nations of people have convinced Israelites that they should not keep the laws of the Most High. You don't have to keep these things. They don't want you to know who you are. Why? Because you understand that you must keep these words. So now we see here it says telling you, take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief. An evil heart like who? An evil heart like the forefathers had. An evil heart that will rebel against the commandments of the Most High, an evil heart that would not trust the Most High, an evil heart that would doubt Yah. An evil heart is not always you doing something that's evil. He referred to these people with an evil heart as those who simply would not obey the commands of the Most High because they did not trust in him. So it is telling you that, that you, brothers, don't be like that. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living Elohim. Are any of you, are any of us gonna be like the ancient forefathers and mothers? Are we gonna boast that we Israelites? Are we gonna say hallelujah every Shabbat and every feast day but when the Most High has us to do something, we're fearful to do what the Most High says do, so we lean to our own understanding and we don't do what the Most High commands us to do. Zakir Eliyahu pointed to it earlier. What happens when this society, this world government tells you what you must do to get food, or we're not going to give you food. When they come through with this, you can't keep Torah type doctrine and enforcement of law. We've already seen it in the historical recordings when you read about the Maccabees, how there was a time period when they took the Torah and they told you, if you were caught studying Torah, keeping Torah, circumcised your children, eating clean, observing the Sabbath, you were to be put to death. You bet not keep Sabbath. You better eat pork and swine. You bet not circumcise your children. All the things that the word tells you, you must do. And so there was many that what gave into that so that they would not be killed. And there was those 
who died to do what? Walk in that obedience. They don't want you to read those historical recordings. Because what it should do is it should cause us to want to prepare ourselves and to be praying that the Most High would give us a level of faith that we need to be pleasing in his sight. It is telling us, brothers, take heed to yourselves. Be observant. Be diligent with yourself. Do self-examination, self-reflection. Let there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departed from the living Elohim. So will we be like our ancient forefathers? And so Zakai and Yaquab brought it very vivid. He said he can sort of see why they sort of did what they did. If you put it in real time, you're not just reading from the page, oh, I wouldn't do that. No, you don't know what you would do until you're faced with a situation. We're not looking at this word in real time. These people actually seen the giants in the land. They were scared. They seen the walls. So it created doubt. And they came and they gave a mass hysteria, a mass panic to the rest of the tribe. But the most high's word is telling us, don't be like them. Yeah, you're going to be faced with some obstacles. Yeah, there may be some big people in front of you. Yeah, this government may tell you, you're not going to be able to buy or sell unless you take the mark of a beast. But we know that the word of the Most High says that a mark between Yah and his children are those who have the testimony of Yah and keep his commands. Those that observe Shabbat. So we should never let anyone tell you, you can't keep Shabbat. You can do like what the Maccabees did, go into hiding to keep Shabbat. Oh yeah, but you know why most people won't keep Shabbat? Because if you like your comfortable house, if you like your comfortable house, and you like what your master on the job provides by way of monetary gain for you to have the luxuries of this life. I'm trying to paint it this way for a reason. And I'm not looking for a response today, but ask yourself, really, how many of you want to give up your comfortable home and give up your job and have to go live on the run and off grid and have the trust totally on Yah? That's what they had to do. And they didn't do it. So we can read the word and say, oh, oh, I wouldn't do that. Uh, Probably a lot of us probably will. Most high forbid that we do, but if you really start to think about it, just ask yourself, are you ready to give up your comforts? If someone that's a giant that stands seven foot tall and the most high tell you to fight them and everybody in the land is seven, eight, 10 feet tall and the most high saying, go up and occupy that territory. I am with you. How many of us is ready for that? When you look at, I'm five nine. I'm not even six foot. So I'm a little guy compared to a seven footer or eight foot person. But the faith that we have to have is like Moses had. Moses went against the giants himself. He went against Pharaoh who considered himself a mighty one or God. So the reason why we try to paint the picture this way today is Things are coming again, Mishmachah. As Zakeen Eliyahu said last night, the things that are written in the word are simple. These things come around again. There will be a time of the most high proving who is his children. And he's telling us not to be at the provocation of those who provoked him in the wilderness. And then it also says, uh, uh, take heed, brethren. My brothers and sisters who are on this call, who may listen in online. Lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in the party for the living Elohim. Are you going to side with the world or are you going to remain faithful to the Most High? Verse 13, Aki. But exhort one another daily while it's called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. So there's two words that we use a lot and some of these words can get confused sometimes. There's a word we hear in scriptures a lot is exalt. And then there's another word that's exhort, right? So I'm gonna just give a definition for exhort. It said exhort, all right? By definition as a verb, strongly encourage or urge someone to do something. Strongly encourage or urge someone to do something. So when we read in the Torah, when we read in Deuteronomy today, when they came back with a bad report, they discouraged the people. The people became discouraged to do what the Most High told them to do. They should have came back with a report. The land is good. The Most High said, take it, man, let's go. 
The Most High is with us. If Yah's with us, who can be against us? The Most High told us to go. We went. We in the right place. This land is formed with milk and honey. We don't care about them big walls, and we don't care about no uh, no Anakim being in the land. Do y'all remember what the Most High did to Pharaoh? Do y'all remember the part of the Red Sea? Do y'all remember the firstborn that died in Mizraim? We ain't got nothing to be scared about. Let's go. But instead, they did what? They discouraged the people, and that was an evil heart. Discouraging someone from keeping the commands of the Most High is considered an evil heart. But the word exhort means to do what? Strongly encourage or urge someone to do something. So now I read that verse again, Aki. With that definition in mind, to strongly encourage one another. Read it, Aki, 13. But exhort one another daily. Why does call do what? Today? Do what? Encourage one another daily, brothers and sisters. Encourage one another daily. When we read this word, we need to go and see. The scripture says, look, take heed, brothers. And if you have an evil heart, what we should be doing is going back to Deuteronomy. We should be going back to the book of Bamid Bar or Numbers, and we should be reading everything we possibly can about when the children of Israel was in Egypt and when it was brought out of Egypt. And what did they do that made them not get into the promised land or enter into rest? We're going to say, consider, my brothers and sisters, do any of you have the same evil heart? Their disbelief, their disobedience, their idolatry, and all those things kept them from getting into the point of rest. So now it says, but exhort one another daily. They discouraged each other. They discourage one another. We are told here to do what? But exhort one another daily because it just told you to refer back to what happened in the wilderness when they discourage one another. It's telling you to do what? Exhort one another daily. Brothers and sisters, and this is something that we need to work on more and more is exhorting one another and encouraging one another. I need your encouragement. You need my encouragement. We need one another's encouragement. When we was reading in uh, Deborah or Deuteronomy earlier, I had a meditation point. And as I'm speaking, I'm looking at how they moved, not when the Most High said move, but they moved after the Most High had already said he ain't with them no more. And then I had to consider me. I'm like, how many times have I made that mistake? How many times have I made a mistake like that? Am I still making mistakes like that? Thinking the most high is with me when the most high may not be with me because I have an evil heart. Not that I'm doing evil because see, it's real easy to slip into that evil heart also because you can say you don't have it because you're like, I keep the Sabbath. I keep the commandments. I'm doing these things. I'm walking righteous. Yeah, that is a form of righteousness. But unbelief is not righteous. Not trusting the most high is not righteous. So then how many times have we known what the word said and have not done what the word said? Well, I ain't gonna do that right now. I still have some growing to do. Abraham did what the most I said to self saying. We lost you more, Ray. I can't hear anything. Can anybody else hear anything? Hello. No, the mic is open. The mic is open, but but uh, Maury, if you could hear us, your mic is open, but we're not hearing you. Because we're in front, you don't have to let them back in front, okay? That's not it. Go ahead. All right. I, I, Somebody I'll else's message. mic is open, too. I, I'll send him a message. I think he locked out and trying to lock back in. Okay. Uh, verse 13 again but exhort one another daily while it is called today. Lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of a shiach if we hold 
the beginning of our confidence, steadfast until the end. While it is said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation. For some, when they had heard, did provoke, howbeit not all that came out by Eve, by Moses. But with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believe not? So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I told out for the reading. Uh, I see uh, Maurice Mock. Are you back in? Yes, sir. And pardon me, Mr. Kyle. I think due to the storm, I think it might be still working on the internet in the area because uh, I had to switch over to uh, Wi-Fi. I mean, uh, to Sailor. So uh, y'all, please pardon me for that. Can I be heard as I can? Okay, Maureen, we hear you. Okay. Sleek out, Mr. Kyle. Let me try to find my point back. All right. All right. So back to the uh, to where, where where we left off at. Um so, so, but exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. So we should be encouraging one another, you know, and as I was stating earlier, like when when I was reading the lesson, like when have I fallen short? When have I not obeyed what the Most High told me to obey? Like, yes, we're keeping commandments and we're observing Shabbat and we're keeping the feast days. But what about when something was pressing in front of me or there was an issue in my life that I actually linked to my own understandings and tried to fix it myself instead of trusting in the Most High and standing on the Most High? We have to ask ourselves these type questions because the text is telling us to refer back to a time when our forefathers made this mistake. And it called their heart evil because they had unbelief. So faith is going to be something that is key that we must have, Mr. Kyle, with serving the Most High. So again, we should be exhorting one another and encouraging one another. Keep each other esteemed and lift up. Keep pushing each other towards the mark. When, when we come to a, a gathering together, Mr. Kyle, it should be rejuvenating. It should be empowering. It shouldn't be that when we come to a Knesset or we come to a gathering, we come to Shabbat service, we come to a feast day, we leave feeling worse than when we came. It should be empowering. Why? Because we should give each other a certain level of encouragement. We should exhort people to continue pushing towards the mark. When a person is down, you give them an encouraging word from the word of the Most High. Yah be, may Yah be with you. Remember what happened when Moses went through this. Remember what happened when Abraham was faced with this. You can make it through the task. Trust in Yah. We should be encouraging one another daily to walk in faith. Lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin so that our hearts be not hard through the deceitfulness of sin because sin is very tricky, sin is very deceitful, and sin will come and make you stumble. Verse 14, I can, can I didn't hear where y'all stopped at. Verse 14. Verse 14. When we are made partakers in Mashiach, of Mashiach, if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast until the end. While it is said, today if you hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation. So Paul said for a second. So it says, for we are made partakers of Mashiach if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast until the end. So hold your confidence steadfast until the end, meaning what? We should remain in righteousness, we should not doubt anything, we should continually walk in Torah. We should not allow anyone or anything cause us to doubt the Most High. We should endure until the end that we shall what? Find that rest. And the Most High bring us to that place of rest. It said, for you are made partakers of Mashiach if ye, if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast until the end. So we got to keep one another encouraged, Mishra Kyle, so that no one gets to the place of doubt. We don't need one another doubting. We don't need to be the one that, man, I don't know if the most I'm going to do it, man. Like, we're going through this, man. I don't know about it. We don't need to come around bringing all that doubt. We need to hold the confidence of our, our faith. We need to hold the confidence of this word that's written for us. We need to see how the most high's promises are written for us. We need to know that the most high will deliver us if we keep his commands. The most high will restore us if we keep his commands. So we need to exhort one another to be confident and to stay confident. And Ms. Bacar, we all need a little boost sometimes. We all need a word of encouragement sometimes. So we 
should not always have a word to discourage someone. And I know y'all know what, you know, what someone told me, I actually don't. But y'all know I come with the uh, what I think to be the fire and brimstone sometimes, meaning I want us to be scared. Because if you don't have the fear of Yah, you won't be delivered either. The fear of Yah is the beginning of being accepted of him. The fear of Yah is the beginning of being loved of him. The fear of Yah is the beginning of a cope the beginning of wisdom. So we need to probably know how to fear the most high. And that's why we've been saying this word being fit for a while, because we should respect the most high. It shouldn't be where we are so easily persuaded to break his commandments. We're so easily to give in to our fear. And when I say our fear, I mean our natural fear. The fear of losing our job. The fear of losing a friend. The fear of losing a car. The fear of losing a home. The fear of losing a meal. We shouldn't let that trump y'all. Our faith should be in the most high. Well, if you take this from me, the most high going to give me something else because I serve him. That's my creator. I would rather feel y'all the man. We need to keep each other exhorted and encouraged, letting them know, yes, that might be a mountain before you. There may be some walls that have been put in the way before you, as Godala Koti Waleen says. There's a map, and the Torah gives us a map, but it may not tell you everything that's going to be on the road on your way to rest. But when you come to the obstacle in the road, if the most I told you to go this way, you go this way, you continue to press on towards the mark. You walk in righteousness and you don't waver, you don't doubt. Verse 15. While it is said, today if you hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation. So while it is said today, if you will hear his voice, Harden not your hearts as in the provocation. What was the provocation? We read about it in the book of By Me Bar Sika. Today we read about it in the book of uh, uh, Devarim, Deuteronomy chapter one. What was some of the things they've done? The Most High told them to go in, obtain the promised land. This is the land that I promised Abraham that I was going to give unto you. Now is the day for you to go in. Go in and take the land. They disobeyed. It said they rebelled against the command of the Most High. They provoked him to anger. And the most I said, you have grieved me in my heart. Therefore, I'm no longer with you. And then they said, oh, no, we're going to go. We're going to go now. We're going to go fight. He told us, we're going to go fight. And he said, no, don't go now. Because I already told you to go. You doubted me. So don't go now. I'm no longer with you. We don't want to fall victim. While today is today, let us hold our confidence and walk in the most high. While today, while it is said today, if ye hear his voice, Harden not your hearts as in the wilderness, as in the provocation, which is in the wilderness. They heard the voice of the Most High. They heard his instructions, but they hardened their hearts. They did not yield to the will of the Most High. They did not trust the Most High. So their unbelief caused them to not make it into their rest. And the same thing will happen to us today if we don't trust the Most High and if we don't believe the Most High. So yes, we want to talk about re re repentance, Forgiveness and reconciliation, but we have to believe that we can be reconciled to the Most High. We have to believe that the Most High loves us. And we have to believe that His Word tells us to do certain things. And whatever His Word says, we must do it because we believe and we trust in Him. And we know that He is an Elohim that promises, He's an Elohim that keeps covenant with those whom He makes covenant with. Continue to read, Kanakya. Verse 16, for some when they had heard did provoke, howbeit not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. But with whom was he grieved 40 years? Was it not with them that had sinned whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? And to whom he swore that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believed not. So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. So unbelief, Mr. Kyle, so if we don't believe this word to be true, if we don't truly believe and trust in the Most High, we miss the mark also. It says, for some when they heard did provoke, howbeit not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. So some provoke, but not all provoke. So some provoke, but not all provoke him that came out of Egypt by Moses. But with whom was he grieved for the years? So whom was he upset with for 40 years? Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? 
So the ones that was in sin is the ones that he grieved with, is the ones that he was angry with. So yes, Mishpachah, as a nation of people, you're going to sometimes see some horrible things happening to people that's of your very own nation. But who is the most high grieved with or angry with? Is it not they who are in sin? So what does it say in the book of uh, 1 John, what sin is? It says sin is what? A transgression of Torah. So if people are teaching us that the laws are done away with. They're teaching you to walk in sin. That grieves the most high. When we don't have the laws of the most high, that means we don't trust in his word. We believe man over Yah. Yah said his covenant is forever, an everlasting covenant. Man has come in their religious circles and have said what? The laws are done away. Well, you don't have to do this. All you have to do is believe and you shall be saved. You should have rest. That's a lie. The most high wants you to obey his word and keep his commandments. He never said that the Tanakh or the Old Testament was done away with. We see all throughout the text the one thing that's all referred to is Passover, Moses, and what happened in the wilderness. That's all throughout the prophets. That's all throughout the brick out of Shah. That is a point in history that the Most High did not want us to forget. Because <clears throat> that's a point that we always have to reference to understand what took place. Why was the Most High angry? What grieved him? And he's telling us once again in the brick out of Shah, the New Testament, this is what grieved me. Some of them provoked me. Was he not angry with everyone? It says, but whom was grieved? Whom was he grieved 40 years? Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? And to whom swear he that should enter not, and to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that what? Believe not. That's why I said in the book of James and in the book of Hebrews, without faith, it is impossible to please him. Without faith, it is impossible to please the Most High. So if you don't believe him, just keeping the laws for the sake of being pleasing in the sight of men, like, yeah, I want them to know uh, I, I wear my Zizis, I wear my fringes. Oh, yeah, I want them to know I was at Shabbat service. If you don't believe in Shabbat, if you don't believe in the feast days, if you don't really believe in the commandments, but you just do it because you like the people that you gather with, that's still a form of missing the mark as well. You have to do this walk with your whole heart. You cannot have unbelief. You cannot have doubt. You have to totally trust in the Most High. And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believe not. So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. And we read that today where? In the book of Deuteronomy, which the New Testament is referring us back to a testimony. What is the testimony again? Evidence. The evidence of something. So we have to go back to the testimony that was already written of Moses, who said was faithful in all, as well as the testimony of the forefathers who were wicked, who did not believe, who did not make it into the promised land, who did not enter into rest. And it said, consider your ways. Are you like them? If so, we need to repent. Consider your ways. Don't be like them. If you want to enter into your rest, don't provoke y'all to anger as they did in the wilderness. Stop murmuring. Stop complaining. Stop causing other people to doubt. Learn to encourage one another to walk obedient to the law, statutes, commands of the Most High. Let's drop that, Kanak, y'all. Let's move to the book of uh, Isaiah for a moment. Yeshayahu or Isaiah, chapter 22. We're going to the book of Yeshayahu or Isaiah, chapter 22. And I'm going to work verse 23, can I, Isaiah 22 and 23. At first, when we're reading this, it's going to sound a bit off topic, but y'all just give me a moment. I'm going to bring it to, uh, I'm going to bring it together. I just want one verse, Isaiah 22 and 23. And I will fasten him as a nail in a sure place, and he shall be for a glorious throne to his father's house. So I want to pause here for a second. So we want to probably want to say, where does that go in with the provocation in the wilderness? What does this have to do with faith? So on and so forth, right? So for one, the word for the root word for imunah for faith comes from the Hebrew word, which is H539, which is Amen, right? Aman or Amen, right? So it says a primitive root, 
probably to build up or support, to foster as a parent or nurse, figuratively to render, to be firm or faithful, to trust or believe, to be permanent. All right, read some of them definitions again. Steadfast is another one. So again, the root word for faith comes from the root word amen or aman, which is H539. It says the primitive root, properly to build up or support, to foster as a parent or nurse, figuratively to render, to be firm or faithful, to trust or believe, to be permanent, to be morally true, certain, to be steadfast, to establish. So this is a word saying it's something very concrete. This is something that's supported. This is something that is firm. This is something that you know exists, right? So now I'm going back to where we just read from. It says, and I will fasten. Fasten is joining something together, right? Him as a nail in a sure place. What does nails do, Mr. Khan? Support or fasten, make permanent. Nails support or fasten or make permanent. There's sometimes when you put nails in things, it don't come apart. It takes a whole lot of work to bring it apart, to unjoin it from something. If the nails are, are, are secured and hammered down properly, a nail secures something and holds it in place. So mm -hmm. in the English, in the KJV, it says, and I will fasten him as a nail in a sure place. That word for sure place or sure is going to be the word H539 which is the word amen, which is the root word for imuna or amuna. It's going to be that root word amen. So I will fasten him as a nail in a firm, a secure place, a amen place. And he shall be for a glorious throne of his father's house. My reason for going here is I want to show a function of what it looks like when amen is used in the text. It's a word that's, a word that's firm. It's a word that fastens. It's a word that supports. It's a word that's sure, right? It's a word that that defined, if, if defined to us means to be something sure, to be something firm, to be something unmovable, right? That's my only reason for going there. Now let's go to the book of Bereshit of Genesis. With this understanding, let's now go to the book of Bereshit of Genesis 15 and 1. Can I tell you? Bereshit of Genesis 15 and 1 through about verse 6. Verse Genesis 15, starting at 1. After these things, the word of God came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am your shield and your exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Master God, what will you give me, seeing I go childless, and the steward of my house is this Eleazar of Damascus? And Abram said, Behold, to me you have given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of Yah came unto him, saying, This shall not be your heir, but he that shall come forth out of your own bowels shall be your heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, and said, Look now toward heaven, and tell the stars, if you be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall your seed be. And he believed in Yah, and he counted to him for righteousness. So the root word is written there for he believed in Yah is the same word H539 at the root. And he believed in Yah and it was counted, uh counted him for righteousness. Why? Somebody y'all just uh, uh uh give me a couple of responses from the floor. I'll take a few responses. Y'all tell me something that y'all know about Abraham, what makes this a significant story that's presented here and is showing us a visual of faith. Y'all, y'all, fill it in for me. Give me some, give me some things that you know about Abraham. Um, Shalom. He didn't, he didn't have to question the Most High. He, he believed whatever the Most High said was true, and he went with it, not wavering. And it, and that was it. And I yield. He also didn't hesitate whenever the Father told him to do something. He did it right then and there. Hallelujah. And I'm on a device so I can't see the screen. So, Zakane, if there's anybody else with hands up or anybody that's want to share something, the floor is still open just for a few more moments. Anyone else have anything? Uh, don't Shashamar's got his hand up, Maury. Uh, don't Shashamar? King. 
Yeah, Abraham, you know, he left his father's house and then he went on a journey, not fully knowing exactly what was going to happen to him, you know, or his his mistress, his family. But he, you know, he still chose to walk with the Most High. Then he got him to this point where the Most High gave him a promise and he believed in it and he counted for righteousness, you know. Are you? So Shashima went back in history a little bit. And in the reading that we read today in Deuteronomy, the Most High basically said, I've been with y'all for 40 years doing signs and wonders. And y'all don't believe me enough to go into the land? Do y'all not recall everything I've already done for you? How little is your faith? So now Shashima said, so Abraham was told to go into a land. He had to leave his father's house. He had to leave where he had provision. He had to leave from where there was comfort. He had to go someplace totally strange to him that he did not know. He didn't fully know how to get there. He had to walk and trust in the Most High, and he believed in the Most High. And since he believed in the Most High, he made it to that place. The Most High provided for him, delivered his wife from the hands of someone, delivered him. They're in the land. Abraham is blessed. Yah has been with him all this time. So Abraham has learned to do what? Trust the Most High. The Most High's word is proven. So now this time, what I'm asking is, what makes this so significant? Abraham was almost 100 years old. His wife was old. They could not have a child together. His wife was barren. So Abraham reasoned in his own mind as we would do. So in his own mind, he's like, I'm old. My wife can't have children. So you're talking about Eliezer, my servant. And the Most High said, no, Abraham. I'm not talking about Abraham, your servant. I know you love him like a son and continue to love him like a son. But what I am saying is, me, Yah, the Almighty, El Shaddai, I'm going to let you have a son of your own bowels, of your own loins, and you're going to produce an heir according to your nationality, according to your loins, according to your genealogy. It's going to come forth from you in your old age. And then what it said in verse 5, And he believed. What's my reason for going here? It's already been firmly fastened together in Abraham's mind who Yah is. Yah's word already means something to Abraham. He told me to leave my father's house. I did that. He told me he had, I had a little fear along the way. There were some situations I didn't probably know how to handle. I told my wife not to say she's my wife. I had my little fleshly moments came. But I went. I didn't doubt. And when fear came upon me, I still pushed forward. I did what the Most High told me to do. So now the Most High is telling me, an 100-year-old man, that I'm going to have a son from my loins? Then I believe the Most High. It's firm to me. My faith is in if the Most High said it is so, because he's already shown me so much. And before we start doubting the most high today, Mr. McCall, take the mile as I came posted in the group message. Do understand that being in captivity or being on punishment is going to have some uncomfortable moments. We will not always, Mr. McCall, have the best moments always. We're going to go through some things, yes. But remember what the most high has already delivered you from and continue to trust in the most high. Don't doubt the most high because one thing goes wrong for you or one obstacle comes your way. Just remember how many years you've been on this life, on this earth. How long has the Most High looked out and provided for you? How many other times have you gone through something and the Most High made a better way out of no way for your life, for our lives? So remember those times. And so now when the word says in Hebrews, exhort one another, when you see your brother, your sister getting down, encourage them, exhort them, say, remember when you went through this and the Most High delivered you? Believe like that again. The Most High has you. Remember what Abraham went through? But he still believed and trusted in the Most High. Remember what Moses went through? He still believed and trusted in the Most High. Remember when Joseph was in Egypt? He still believed and trusted in the Most High. So believe and trust in the Most High. You may go through a time where it's uncomfortable, but the Most High is going to bring you through, and it's going to be better if you obey him, keep his commands, love him, and believe and trust in him. Remember a yo when he got sick? Remember, oh, yo, when he lost his children, did it not say that his ending was better than his beginning? He still had more. The Most High re-blessed him and blessed him more abundantly. 
So when it says what was written four times, written for our learning, but a yo kept faith in Yah. So yes, it got uncomfortable for a season for yo, but he still did not abandon Yah. So this is how we have to exhort one another by having what discernment of the word or knowledge of the word, by recalling what the Most High has done for us already in our lives, that we will stay steadfast, that we will not be moved, that our imuna, our faith, will keep us firm. So it says, and he believed Yah in it, and he counted it to him for righteousness. This verse is so heavy for me. The reason why is because, for one, it's the word of Yah, so every verse that Yah has is heavy. It's got so much weight to it. But the reason why I'm highlighting this is such a heavy verse that has so much weight to it, because the church teaches that Abraham walked by faith. It wasn't about obedience, it was about faith. And so Abraham is the father of our faith, which is written in Romans chapter 4. But when you go back and you read it to knock about Abraham's faith, it wasn't that he just believed. He believed something that was true and firm. He believed the word of the Most High. It wasn't that he believed that I can trust in the Most High and do what I want to do and I don't keep the law. If the Most High says circumcise my flesh, I'm going to do that. Now, yes, circumcision profit is little. But if the most high say be circumcised, I'm going to circumcise the foreskin of my flesh as an old man and every man that lives amongst me. So now when people are telling us that you don't have to do the laws because it's all about faith, and if you're making your boast that Abraham, which is the father of faith, is who you're following, you need to go and look at his life. It was counted to Abraham as right, not that he just believed, but he believed what the Most High said. He trusted it that I'm going to have a son of my own boss, which means what? I still have to do a work of trying to produce the seed. I still have to lay with my wife to bring forth the seed that the Most High said is going to come forth. I have to trust that we're going to have a child. Because the Most High said so. Abraham's faith was not that I believe in the Most High while walking contrary to his commands. Abraham's faith was, I believe the Most High, and I stand firm because the Most High has already proven to me everything. So I can't be moved from what Yah tells me to do. No matter how great the circumstances may be, I believe that the Most High can do what he said he's going to do. If he told me, he's going to do it. Now, here's the thing about being presumptuous. We want things that the Most High might not have told us he's going to give us. So then when we don't get it, we're upset with the Most High when we don't get it. But there are things that the Most High has promised us that we can be guaranteed that we're going to have. Because he said he will provide. So Abraham believed what the Most High said, and that was counted to him for righteousness. This is one of my favorite stories. Because it shows us how we're to walk in faith and how we're to trust in the Most High. Let's drop that, Aki. Let's move on to, uh, what did you start? Verse 6, right? Yeah, you start the verse 6. Let's also move now to Bereshit, uh, chapter 26 for a moment. I want to cover some of these from the Torah. Let's go to Genesis chapter 26, 1 through 5. Bereshit, Genesis 26. And there was a famine in the land, beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gerar. And Yah appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt, dwell in the land which I shall tell you of. So journey in this land, and I will be with you, and, I, and will bless you. For unto you and to your seed, I will give all these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swear to Abraham your father. And I will make your seed to multiply as the stars of heaven. And will give unto your seed all these countries, and your seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my laws, my statutes, and my laws. So that's very key. In verse 5, it says, for one, he's letting Abraham's seed now know that I'm going to multiply you because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. So Abraham didn't just have uh, have faith and not obey, his faith had him doing what? Whatsoever the Most High's word commanded. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, my judgments. Because he did this, what's going to happen? 
and y'all appeared in him and said, go down to Mithraim, do, uh, go not down to Egypt, dwell in the land which I shall tell you. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with you and will bless you for unto you and unto your seed I will give all these countries and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham, your father. So as I already promised Abraham, your father, I'm also making a promise with you. So you have to know what promises did he make to Abraham at this current time to know what you must do. What did Abraham obey? How did he obey the father's voice? How did he keep the father's charge? He obeyed his voice by keeping his statutes and his Torah or his laws. So now here again, because of Abraham's faith, his seed is going to be blessed. And now his seed is being told that I will multiply you as the stars of heaven. And I'm going to give you land and I'm going to bless your land because of an oath which I swear unto Abraham, your father. So do we have faith in the covenant that the most I have made with Abraham? So remember when I touched on reverse faith earlier? The reason why some people may not actually believe and trust in the covenant that the most high made with Abraham, because we're not living right. We're not seeing some of the blessings because we're not living right. But if we actually get ourselves right and we start studying the word, not just reading it and then closing the book and saying, okay, y'all, I read it. I'm doing this. Now y'all bless me and understand that there was time periods of hundreds of years before some things came to pass. So just because you do something today don't mean you're going to see the blessing tomorrow, but you should still want the blessing to come upon your seed after you. And as we covered last night, we seen that even when our forefathers made mistakes, such as Moses made a mistake and could not get into the promised land, he still made sure he walked up right before the people to get them to the land. As Eli did not correct his sons, he still made sure he taught Samuel the proper information about the Most High, how to hear from the Most High, and he directed them to hear from the Most High, and the Most High still was going to take Ellie's life, but he still raised Samuel up right. So even we, if we believe in the covenant that the Most High made with Abraham, even if there's a portion that we do not experience ourselves, we should understand how the Most High spoke to Abraham's seed after Abraham was no longer present. He still told Abraham's seed, I'm going to bless you with the promise that I promised to Abraham. Nobody can do away with that covenant. The church don't have the authority to do away with the covenant of the Most High. The, the covenant to Israel through Abraham cannot be put away or made void by the Christian church. He did not place the covenant that he made with Abraham, Abraham Abraham's seed after him, with replacement theology that the church is saying, now it's to the Christian church. The covenant he made to Abraham still stands on the generations to come after Abraham if they would do what? Study the Tanakh. Read and find out what did our father do? What did he do? Why did the Most High make a covenant with him? What must we do to return to the covenant with the Most High? What must we do? We must repent so that we may be forgiven. We must also forgive that we may be forgiven so that we can be reconciled to the Most High. But we must also do what? Believe and trust the word of the Most High. That there's still a promise with our name on it, if we obey. Genesis 22, 13 through 18. And I'm going to get to the close shortly after. Bear a sheet. Genesis 22, 13 through 18. Very chief Genesis 22, starting at 13. And sleek out for one moment. Shashmar, get for me James chapter 2, starting with verse 14. All right, call up what you got to get for knockdown read. Very chief Genesis 22 and 13. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Yahweh Yahweh. For as it is said to this day, in the mount of Yah it shall be seen. And the messenger Yah called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, By myself have I sworn, says Yah. For because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son, that in blessing I will bless you and in multiplying I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven. 
and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and your seed shall possess the gates of enemies. Give me verse 18. And in your seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. Hallelujah. So Shashamar referenced when Abraham left the land of his fathers, but here's something else that Abraham recalls. So whenever the Most High is telling him things, so now we get to see how Abraham always had faith in the Most High, because Abraham not only uh, believed that he was going to have a son, but this was the only son that him and his wife had together. And he was told he was going to be a father of many nations through this one son. And when the Most High told Abraham to bring that one son, who the Most High said was the son of promise, to bring him to be sacrificed, what did Abraham do? He took him up to be sacrificed. He didn't doubt the Most High. He didn't, he didn't say, oh, the Most High went back on his word. The Most High's uh, not going to bless me with the son. He's going to take him from, from me. He still trusted the Most High. And Abraham called the name of that place, Yahweh Yara, as it said in this day in the Mount of Yah, it shall be seen. And the Malachim of Yah called unto Abraham out of the heaven the second time and said, by myself have I sworn, saith Yah, but because you have done this thing and have not withheld thy son, thy only son, that in blessing I will bless you and in multiplying, I will multiply your seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore and your seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. So what do we see happen? The most high provided a ram in the bush. So instead of Abraham doubting and getting all fearful, if the most high told me to bring my son whom he has blessed me with and whom he's told that, that I'm going to be the father of many nations through this particular son, but now the Most High is calling me to bring him to sacrifice, I'm going to take him because the Most High says so. And the Most High provided a ram in the thicket, a ram in the bush, to be sacrificed. And so, but because of Abraham's, even when I, Abraham's faith, he was multiplied. That in blessing, I will bless you and in multiplying, I will multiply your seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and your seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. All because Abraham believed the Most High, trusted in the Most High, and he was firm in his stance on doing what the Most High said to him. So this was not Abraham saying he believed and always walked in fear and always walked in, in rejection in the or the word of the Most High provoking the Most High to anger. No, whatever the Most High told Abraham to do, he did knowing that Yah was going to provide, knowing that Yah was going to protect, or Yah was going to bless him. And in closing, let's go to James chapter 2, 14 through 26. Adon Shashima, if you would read that for me, sir. Okay. Book of Yaakov, coming called James chapter 2, starting at verse 10, verse 14 again. Book of Yaakov, commonly called James, chapter 2, starting at verse 14. And it reads, <clears throat> My brothers, what use is it for any one to say he has belief but does not have works? This belief is unable to save him. And if a brother or sister is naked and in need of daily food, but one of you says to them, go in, peace. Be so, born. So, look, pause for one second for me, Shai. So in the book of uh, Mishli of Proverbs, it said that wisdom is the principal thing, but with all that getting, get what? Understanding, right? So it says, with all that getting, get understanding, right? So we have what we call reading, and when you learn to read in school, they have a thing called reading comprehension. So we need to have reading comprehension skills. So let's apply reading comprehension skills to this text, Shashma, take it from the top again, because I want to bring this point out using reading comprehension skills. Okay. 14. Start at verse 14 again. And it reads, my brothers, what use is it for anyone to say he has belief but does not have works? This belief is unable to save him. That's a question. What does, my brothers, what does it profit any man that says he has faith and has no works? Can his faith save him? That's a question. And this is coming from what's commonly called the New Testament, which we call Brit Kadasha. This is going to be very key. So this is a question being asked. 15. 
And if a brother or sister is naked and in need of daily food, but one of you says to them, go in peace, be warm and be filled, but you do not give them the bodily needs, what use is it? So also belief, if it does not have Paul for a second, Sean. Paul for a second. So now if there's a brother or sister that's destitute of food, clothing, uh, uh, they they need something from you and they come to you and you tell them to depart in, fit, depart in peace and be warm and filled, the most I got you. Does Is that profitable to them? Does that help them in any way? Is it profitable when the Torah says that the poor will always be amongst us? And if the poor is amongst us, there's a portion of what we have that the most High blessed us with that we're supposed to allow for the what? The poor. If we are gathering food out of our garden and we drop anything, and if a poor man or woman sees us drop something, it tells you not to pick it up and put it back in the bucket. That belongs to the what? The poor that's on the outside. The outer portion of your garden, you should not even be gathering from the outer portion. That is for what? The stranger and the poor that comes by to be able to pluck food out of your garden that's provision by the Most High. So if a person comes to you who has much, asking for help in time of need, and you just tell them, y'all bless you, they came to you because y'all probably directed them to you, and they know Torah says, my brother should look out for me. And I do have another lesson coming soon, Mr. Pekah, because it doesn't mean everybody that comes with their hand out, we're supposed to always give, because it says no to whom you do good to. But I'm saying in a natural sense of us just understanding this is a poor person that comes in need and that's to the food. If you just tell them to go on about their business, the most high has you. Is the most high gonna come down and feed them? No, the most high bless us with substance. And what we had when we were dealing with agriculture ourselves, the what on the outer extremity of our garden was for them, what we dropped was for them. So it says, What does it profit? Does it profit them? So let's comprehend what we're reading. So it's asking, does this profit them? Read on. Verse 17. So also belief, if it does not have works, is in itself dead. Verse 18. Read that again. Verse 17. So also belief, if it does not have works, is in itself dead. Verse 18. So faith, if it does not have what? The works that follow it? If, if, if the firm actions of your belief is not producing sleek eye, if the firm belief that you said you have is not producing an action, it's saying it's what? Dead. It's not profitable. You can say all day long that you, you, you believe in the most high, but if you're not doing what his word says do, that's not real faith. That's dead. It's not profiting anything. Continue to read. Verse 18, but some might say, you have belief and I have works. Show me your belief without your works and I shall show you my belief by my works. You believe that Elohim is one. You do well. The demons also believe and shudder. But do you wish to know, O oh foolish man, that the belief without the works is dead? Reading comprehension. So how is it that people want to say the Torah is done away with and I have to do none of that because all I got to do is believe and you have no works. So even when the church is teaching the doctrine that it's not about works, the scriptures don't even support that. That's a misunderstanding of one quote by not understanding all the quotes. When it is talking about someone just having works and you want to boast about your works, that don't profit you either to be right here bragging about, oh, I keep this commandment, I keep this commandment, oh, I did it for this person, I did it. That don't profit you either. So when it's talking about that, because some people make their boast of what they do, that don't get you deliverance. But it does not mean that where that was written out in Romans, that you're not still supposed to actually do the will of the most high. It's just saying you shouldn't be bragging about it. And now what it's saying here in James is let you know that, oh man, you can say you have faith without your works. I would like to see you show me your faith without works. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you my faith by my works. Why? Because the works can be seen. You believe that there is one Elohim. The devils do the same thing. But will you know, O oh vain or empty man, that faith without works is dead? 
So if you don't have the works to follow what you say you believe, you really don't have faith because it's dead. It's pointless. So again, it said that the provocation in the wilderness is the reason why a lot of our forefathers and mothers did not make it into their rest because they did not trust. They were not firm and standing on believing in the Most High. They did not recall all that the Most High did to them, the 40 years that was in the wilderness and what happened before they were even entered into the wilderness when he killed the firstborn, all the plagues in Mitzrayim were commonly called Egypt, how he brought them out, how he parted the Red Sea. They did not recall all these things. They did not consider these things and they continued to not trust the Most High. So they worked was, I'm going to do what I want to do. If the Most High tells me to gather twice as much on the sixth day, for, so I have enough for the Sabbath day, I ain't going to gather. I, I'm going to go out on the Sabbath day and get something. They never submitted to the will of the Most High. They didn't trust him. Though he showed them everything, they didn't trust him. So the word here in James is saying, so if you have so-called faith and you don't have work to support it, that's not firm. There's no testimony in that. We need a testimony to go with your faith. Prove to me your faith. Show, show me yours is not yours. Oh, you believe in the Most High? Why are you right still doing this will for sin? Oh, you a servant of the Most High? Why are you not keeping his commandments? Why are you disrespectful? Why are you fornicating? Why are you committing adultery? Faith without works is dead being alone. So now going back to reading comprehension, it's written in the word that you cannot say that the laws are done away with and you believe in the Most High. Because you believe in the Most High, you're going to believe in Torah. You're going to believe the Tanakh and everything that's written therein because they're written in the Tanakh, which is commonly called the Old Testament, are the testimonies. And we've read when we started off in the book of Hebrews that he had us reflect back on a testimony that was written four times for our learning of Moses and our forefathers when they was in the wilderness. So we always going to need to look back to the testimony of the forefathers that were before us because we can see the ones that walked in righteousness, that believed, as well as those that walked in disbelief, who had an evil heart towards the Most High and the judgment that came upon them and those that did not enter into rest. So we want to enter into our blessings. We want to enter into our rest. We must trust the word of the Most High. We must believe him. Continue to read, Kanaki, and we're coming to the close. Hey, can you read, Shashmar? You were reading the chat. Click out. Okay, hold on. All right. Verse, picking up at verse 21 in the book of James, chapter 2, and it reads, Was not Abraham, our father, declared right by works when he offered Yisak, his son, on the slaughter place? Do you see that the belief was working with his works? And by the works, the belief was perfect. Read that verse again. Verse 22. Do you see that the belief was working with his works? Do you see that the belief was working with his works? Read on. And by the works, the belief was perfect. And by the works, the belief was perfect. Perfect faith is obedience to Yah. We see that? Perfect faith is obedience to Yah. Believing Yah. Seeing by works his belief was made perfect. And it's already said, we can comprehend what we're reading. Faith without any works is dead. That's not even real faith because you're not doing anything. It's not concrete. It's not firm. It's not established. But if you believe you trust in the Most High, you're going to do what he says do. So then it started off by saying what? Was not Abraham justified by works? What works? When he had offered his son, which we already read from the Tanakh or from the Torah, which is what? In the book of Genesis. When he was told to bring his son and he did so, that was considered a work of obedience to the Most High. And that was also considered faith to the Most High. But he trusted the Most High that the Most High was going to make him a father of many nations through the son. And so if the Most High told me to bring him, I'm bringing him. And so again, how is Abraham's righteous counted for righteousness? He did what the Most High said. And this is considered perfect righteousness because he was obedient to the word of the Most High. 23, I think. 23. And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, Abraham believed Elohim, and it was reckoned to him for righteousness. And he called him he who loves Elohim. You see 
then that a man is declared right by works and not by belief alone. All right, hallelujah. And this is going to be the closing point, Mr. Kyle. So now that we also see why it's so important that we study the Tanakh, you cannot properly understand anything that's written in the New Testament without understanding the Tanakh. You can be led astray by false doctrines and teachers that are teaching a Christian belief system of disobedience to Torah, teaching that the Old Testament is done away with, and all those many teachings, when all throughout the Greek kind of shot refers back to the testimonies of the righteous forefathers, or either the testimony of the wicked forefathers that did not believe. So what we see here is that Abraham did something. And that's what made him be called the father of our faith because it was imputed, uh, accounted to him for righteousness because whatever the Most High said to him do, Abraham produced the work of obedience. If he told him to leave his father's house to go, Abraham went. If he told him to circumcise the foreskin of his flesh, he circumcised the foreskin of his flesh. If he told an old man that you're going to have a child from your loins, he believed that. If he told him to bring that only child to be sacrificed, he did that. So his firm belief was in whatever the Most High said, I trust that all his words are going to come to pass. He's going to bless me. He's going to provide me. So I'm going to do whatsoever the Most High commands me to do. So Mr. Rakai, my closing thought is this. We want to be reconciled to the Most High. But we cannot be reconciled to the Most High if we do not believe. Belief also is going to be paramount, a very key in our salvation, in our reconciliation to the Father. We have to believe his word. We have to believe in him. We have to believe it to be true. And we have to walk in it according to righteousness. Doubting nothing, Mr. Khan. Don't doubt the most high. So as we're preparing to come into the feast days, walk into them with joy and gladness in your heart, believing in them, understanding what they represent, Understand that this is the time that the Most High is appointed for us to come together to worship him. Believe that. What is the world telling you? Those days are done away with. But do all this pagan or this heathen culture or tradition. Do all these sinful things. What does the Most High tell you? Remember the Sabbath day to keep it set apart and holy. Believe that. The Sabbath is a sign or a mark between me and you believe that. Why would someone tell us it don't matter? They want you to lose your connection with your father. But if you believe his word, no man should be able to persuade you that the Sabbath is done away with. No man should make you believe that the most high from the very beginning of time created things and knew what was for what. And when Noah went up to the ark, he told him to take Two of the unclean, seven of the clean. He defined things of the animals as clean and unclean going into the ark. Fourteen clean, four unclean, because it says of a kind, bring seven of a kind by pair, the male and the female. So that's 14 clean, four unclean. Why more clean? For sacrifice and for consumption. So then why we believe that the law is done away with? We don't have to observe the dietary law anymore. We eat what we want to eat. Why would we believe that? But we said we believe in the most high. We got faith. All you got to do is pray over it. He's going to bless. Why would he bless something that he told you not to consume? Don't make sense. Make it make sense. He's not going to bless something he told you you're not supposed to have. So faith is in, we trust this word. We live according to this word. We obey this word. And watch the most high show up and bless you or bless us. So with that, Mr. Kai, prepare yourself for the upcoming feast. To enter in with joy and gladness in your heart. Understanding that our Elohim who loved our forefather Abraham, made a covenant with him and said that his seed after him 
would still obtain the blessings of the same covenant that was promised to him if we obey Yah and keep his commands. So instead of following man, before y'all rebuke me, let me make this whole statement. So instead of following man, follow man. Meaning a righteous man. Because Abraham's life was a testimony for us to see what did he do. He trusted Yah over man. So as Abraham trusted Yah, we need to follow that man. As Moses followed Mosiah and was faithful as we covered, we need to follow that man. As King David was righteous and followed Mosiah, we need to follow that man. As Yahushua was righteous, and faithful to the most high. We need to follow that man. We need to follow those who follow the writings of the most high, who submitted to the will and the way of the most high. Prepare your hearts, Mishpachah, to keep these feasts as they're coming up with joy in your heart, believing that they are the days that the most high has set apart for us to observe and to worship him for the fellowship. And let us rejoice in Yah, Mishpachah. But before coming to the feast, Repent and forgive, or forgive and repent, that we may all be reconciled to our Father. With that, Mishpachah, I pray and hope everyone got some wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. What was written four times, written for our learning. Our forefathers did not make it to rest because they did not believe. And so let us not fall into unbelief. Let us consider ourselves. Do we believe the word of Yah or not? Do we have true faith or are we still just talking? And with that, Mr. Kahn, I yield the floor. I give all honor, all things to the most high God. May his name be esteemed always and forevermore. Hallelujah. At this time, I now yield the floor to the elders. If y'all have any words to share, elders, y'all may now share at this time. And because we're gentlemen, we open it to the Emas first. So, to listen, as always, Maury. And you know, it seems like a simple thing, but it's so easy for doubt and for fear to, to seep in. And I just, I have to talk to myself a lot of times, you know, even though I get in the Word and I pray, there are situations and there are times when I just have to talk to myself, you know. And I have to tell myself that He knows the end from the beginning. He knows the outcome of every situation. So when I'm going through something, it's like, okay, when I go through, I'm not going through it alone. He's going to be there with me, regardless of what the outcome is. He's there with me. I mean, he said he'd never leave me or forsake me. So he's with me. And the thing that's key to me is keeping him in his proper perspective. If I can keep him in the forefront of my mind and in his proper perspective, it's easy for me to have faith and, and not to doubt what have you. But this was such a toe, toe word. Praise Abba. Yeah, all praise, all honor, esteem, be to the Most High. And as you say, you know, we always have to keep the Most High at the forefront of our mind. We always have to be thinking on Yah and what does he want from us. So thank you for your words, Iman. Thank you for your words. Hallelujah. Iman Newkirk. Shabbat Shalom. I just want to thank the Most High for that word uh, to tell you. And uh, we uh, have to examine our hearts and our minds and uh, we just remember Never, the righteous has never been forsaken or his seed begging for bread. If we remember to stay righteous, we can also remember that our seed will not be begging for bread. I yield. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Toda, toda, Ima. Ima Shoshana. Praise Yah. You know, there will always be fear. The Father says to fear not. He's letting us know that there will always be fear. But it's a sudden fear sudden fear of the unknown. And we get past that knowing that the word of Yah is firm. He has proven itself over and over through Torah and to ourselves, through our own experiences. So that sudden fear will always come, but we have to get past that and trust Yah. I yield. Hallelujah. That sudden fear will always come, but we have to get past that and trust Yah. And it's seen all throughout the text, Mr. Ricard. We're in no way saying that we would never have that natural fear or that little thing that makes you kind of start to have that doubt creep in. Because we see it all throughout the text. When he told Moshe to go to Pharaoh, at first Moshe had fear. Uh, when Abraham came in, in, in contact with, uh, with, with the Pharaoh or with the king also, 
he told his wife, hey, don't say you're my wife. You know, we when Gideon was told to take the 300 to go to war, you know, he went to Mosai, hey, Mosai, make make this towel be wet. Make this, make it be, uh, make, make the dew come upon it. Now make it be dry. He kept, they still went through their little process. But the thing is, you have to understand there comes a point where you just have to trust the Most High and you can't keep doing things to cause the Most High to be angry with us because we're doubting him. There comes a time when we just have to know that we can be faced with that situation that causes us to have that doubt, but we still have to know that the Most High's word stands true and no matter what we're faced with. And Ms. Picard, trust me, I know it is fearful. It is fearful, it is fearful, it is fearful to, to not have certain things. And I'll tell you, I'm a transparent type teacher. I've had foreclosure notice on a house before. I've had to hire a vehicle before because I was behind on payments because I didn't have finances. But you know what I didn't do? I didn't give in to working on salary. I said, I just gonna have to wait for the most high to provide. I gotta trust this word. And I trusted the word and the most high established me. I never lost a home, hallelujah. But I had those fear letters. I had those fear letters. I never lost a vehicle, praise me to the most high. But I had the fear of knowing I was behind and they probably was looking for it. I've had those moments, but you cannot allow those moments to have you break the commands of the most high. That is us leaning to our own understanding. And the thing is that if we not looking at what we read in the text and seeing exactly what it looks like, we're doing it today and we're making excuses. And again, it's not to offend anyone. I'm just trying to tell us what it is. We making excuses thinking the most high still with us because uh, uh uh I gotta take care of the kids. Yeah, you do, but we gotta figure it out. We gotta stand steadfast in the word of the most high. And I know it is hard sometimes, Mr. Car, and it is a fearful thing to not know where your next dollar is coming from to take care of your family. So when that job offer comes, I need a job. Well, I'm gonna have to go go and they say I gotta work on Shabbat. No, you put it on your thing, man. I work on Sunday, I work as many hours as you need me to on a Sunday but I can't work on Shabbat. You put that information in and you stand on that. The job that I'm on right now, I put in my, before I was hired on the job that I'm on right now, years ago, I cannot work on Sabbath and feast days. That's in my, that's in my paperwork. I gave them my resume and I let them know I cannot work on Sabbath because I observe Shabbat and I observe the more day of the most high. I cannot work on those days. They told me no problem. No problem, we have many different shifts. So I'm training and training because I had to go to training that they had us go through and I had to go to my month's work for training you know, to uh, go, go get my uh, certification to work for them even though I already was certified for my schooling, but I had to go through their certification. And while we in there, there came a time when our supervisors were already made known to us. The supervisor that was made known to me was a supervisor that has a Sabbath working shift. So I told them, hey, this supervisor that I have, he has the shift that starts on what's commonly called Saturday. I can't work that shift. They told me, don't worry about it. We'll get it worked out. So I just trusted them on Saturday. I'm going to be fine anyway, because I already told them I'm not going to work on Saturday. And so I, I, I continued to go through the curriculum, but now I got closer to the time for us to go into the field. So then the supervisor contacted me. He said, hey, they didn't uh, change your schedule yet, and they didn't put you on another team. You still on my team. You need to get them to fix this because come the first day you're supposed to work, I'm expecting you to show up. So though they're telling you one thing, you need to get this fixed because if not, I'm expecting you to show up. So I told him I will not show up on that day, but I hear what you're saying. I need to let them know that this come to the point they need to hurry to fix this. So when I told them to fix it, there's other guys on, on uh, that's in the class with me that said, hey, we'll take that shift. They made it seem like it was impossible to change it. I'm the only guy that said in my resume and all this, what I cannot do and will not do. Y'all told me it was fine when I first started. Now it's getting to the date that we're about to go in the field and I'm going to lose my job that I'm already hired at because now you're going to try to make me work on that day. And you have other guys saying, we'll take the shift, we'll take the shift. And they make it seem like they could not make the change. And this like, I'm like, what do you mean you can't change it? They want the shift that I already told you I cannot work. They never changed the guy's shift. So when the hire date came, I still had the same supervisor shift. And I said, I will not work on Sabbath. The supervisor himself, through the spirit of the most high, understand that this man has already told them, 
I was the supervisor that interviewed him. He told me this stuff, but I'm not the higher ups. I can't really change it. But what he did, he said, listen, right now you're still on my team, but I'm going to tell you to work on Garrett's team, who is not really your supervisor. So you come in on his shift. So the supervisor himself kind of made it what we know it's y'all's will, but y'all had the supervisor tell me to report to another supervisor and the two supervisors worked it out until the supervisor helped me get things right. But I told him, regardless of whatever, I am not going to work on Shabbat. I'm not doing it. And I'm not making this, I'm not saying this as a boast, Mr. Kyle. Yeah, it was fearful. I was at the point of being broke. Being transparent. I didn't even have the clothing that I needed for the interview, Mr. McCall. So for anybody that's feeling like you own hard times, don't think that some of us that you see appear to be blessed now have never gone through anything. Ema, Audrey, and Elder Herman, and you said, do your arms before me. I'm just sharing testimony. My elders made sure that I could have my attire to go to the interview. I didn't have it. That's how low I was. But I said, I'm not working Shabbat. I had many job offers before then. My money and my bank account started doing it because I refused to work on Shabbat. I refused to, and I never did it. Praise be to the most high. So what I'm telling you is when I'm saying faith without works is dead being alone, and I'm not to my own horn, I'm sharing a testimony, and I hope I'm, I'm encouraging someone that though it may look rough for you right now, keep trusting in Yah. He will provide for you. You're going through your proving ground. It's going to be uncomfortable. You're going to get a little scared. You're going to be a little worried. But stand on the word of Yah. Keep his commands and Yah will show up for you. Because he showed up for me. He showed up for Abraham. He showed up for Isaac. He showed up for Yaakov. He showed up for Moshe. Miss Peggy and then Ima Audrey. Um, yes, yeah, Shabbat Shalom, praising our Heavenly Father for His Word. The Word is so powerful. It encourages us. It strengthens us. It guards us against demons. It guards us, uh, blesses us to be obedient. Um, I thank I thank and praise Him because in this world, we are going to have trials and tribulations. And we're not going to always hit the mark. We will make a mistake in sin. And all praises to our Heavenly Father that he's so merciful and he's so forgiving. When we come to him and say, we messed up, will you forgive me? And he forgives you just like that. And he don't hold it against you, hallelujah. Like some of us, when we get mad with each other, we say we forgive you, but no, we holding grudges. We know when we come to him and say, forgive me, he forgives us. So keep walking. And the main ingredient in faith is don't give up. That's the main ingredient in faith. Regardless of what we go through, we will have trials and tribulations. All of us, nobody is exempt. So hang in there and don't give up. All praises to our Heavenly Father for his precious son. I, I yield. Hallelujah. As she said, we're, none of us are exempt. Don't give up. Don't give up. None of us are exempt. We may go through something, but don't give up. That could be the adversary testing you, trying to make you miss the mark, or it could be the most high proving you. So just don't give up, Mr. Kyle. Ima Audrey, yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. I forgot to comment on the two-minute warning. And I just wanted to say that the heart is deceitful, and it's a daily process. It's, I can do my devotions and head out and get in the car, and as soon as somebody cut me off, and mm -hmm. when I pray, I always ask y'all, God would give me a clean heart and a contract spirit. Somebody cut me off and an evil thought or wicked thought comes from my heart. And then I have to ask for forgiveness. So it's it's a process. It's a daily process. So it was a Tobe study. Tobe study. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, 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 that is, that, and that is perfection right there, Ima. That's a, a walking in a maturity, knowing that it's a process. You know, some people thinking that... Uh, uh, you know, it happens overnight. No, you have to continually keep yourself circumspect. And you have to know the tricks of the adversary and how sin tries to come up in us on a daily basis. But we have to keep knowing what the most high's words and doing what his words say to obey because that sin does try to enter our minds. Told out for your words, Ima. Um, elders, I can't Eliyahu, Yaqua, if y'all have any words. Yes, sir. Um, I know my brother is wondering too. 
bring that baton home as an anchor leg. Uh, don't mind. <laughs> um, as um, all of you have been ministering today, I keep hearing, I keep seeing in my mind and asking the question, what kind of ground are we? We all know that Yahuwah's word is good all day long. No matter what, his word is good. That said, though, what kind of ground are we that that word is being put in? There is an onus on each of us as Ima Ajri just uh, mentioned and others have throughout. That onus is that we are constantly to take and do introspection go through constantly weeding because we don't want a weed, an evil seed to take root within us. And hopefully each of us are good ground that the word has been presented and planted in. But just know, just know that every time there is good seed that is sown, the work of the enemy is to root up that seed. He's going to come and test whether or not the seed has taken root. He's going to come and test whether or not you are mature. And of course, Yahuwah is going to allow him to test in order to prove you. So just know that up front so that you know what the MO is, the modus operandi is of this journey. Don't get discouraged when you see what's happening, but stand still in the resolve, in what you know, stand on it and see what it is that Yahuwah would do. I yield. Hallelujah. Tell them for your words of wisdom, not to understand this, okay? Hallelujah. So I can Yaqua. Hallelujah. All praise and esteem to the most high Yah. Um I, I want to kind of um paint the picture, Moray. Uh you did a the dog toad job. Um, but but I think sometimes when we look at, at the history of our our ancestors, we are looking hindsight. We we our 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 sight is 2020 when we read uh <laughs> about our ancestors, but but we gotta remember that they were going through it at the time without that 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 advantage of hindsight. Mm -hmm. you know, um and then it, that's where the faith is kind of is kind of tested you know what i mean like like uh the, it, the most high had given instructions the most high had given instructions and warning and instruction and warning and then a situation arises um and they have to make a decision uh -huh. you know they, they they can't go back to genesis chapter two and see what happened it you know uh on the decision that the forefather made they made the decision in the time of the circumstance and then mm -hmm. we get to see the result of that decision when we read it. What I'm trying to say is that we're going to go through situations where we have to make a decision. But our advantage is if it's a similar situation, which most of the time it is, it's just looking different. You know, if, if we look and see, well, our forefathers did X, Y and Z and this was the result, whether it was a. A, a good result um, or a bad result, we get to see that, um, and I and and I, and I believe that's why the Most High made sure that these records are kept for us, so so we don't have to go through the same thing that our forefathers went through. You know, have faith in His instructions and His promises, and then when we go through these 
similar situations if we need, <laughs> well, actually we should be examining these situations now. So when the situation applies to us in this present time, we have already known and studied the decisions that our forefathers have made, whether their decisions were good or whether their decisions were bad. That's the study to show thyself approved, you know? Uh, and then the faith in the instructions and the promises of the Most High. And then we can see and have faith because um, Hamashiach walked it out, walked it out. And if we follow that example too, the situations that we incur right now, we've already got, uh, We've already got the experience, you know, without even having to go through it. Um, and, and I think that's what we were seeing today, even in in that in that two minute, you know, where where if we if if we rely on our carnal um, uh, desire, I'd say, or either our carnal knowledge instead of the the knowledge that we gain from 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 the experiences of our forefathers compared to Torah, um, I think that's where 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 we go wrong too. Where where the heart is deceitful above all things. That we gotta we can't rely on our own instinct. We have we have instructions and we have um, experiences of what is pleasing to the Most High and what's not pleasing to the Most High. And if we are faithful in His promises and the instructions of his Torah, which is the perfect way of life, if we rely on that and not lean to our own understanding or rely on our own personal instinct, um, then, then we do what the Most High has said with the faith that what he promised is gonna come true. And, and I think that was displayed today in, in the culture, in the two minute and this, and this Shabbat lesson. So. That, that's what I pick up from it. And it does. It, it, it causes it. You should examine daily and, and encourage each other daily. We can do this. We can do this. We got examples. We saw how they did it. We got examples. We can do it. We can do it. And if you get weak and tired, lean on me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. As your brother, as your sister. You know, we can do it together. You know, um, I, I think it was Godal told lesson all the way around from culture to two minutes to this uh, Shabbat lesson and, and told our Rabbi Abba for putting the words in your mouth, um, More. Hallelujah. Ayo. Hallelujah. All praise, all honor, all esteem to the Most High Yah. And told our Yah for your words, Zakane. Um, And one thing that uh, I do like that you just highlighted, we have uh, the advantage of being able to read what has happened aforetime. They did not have that advantage. So, when things were happening to them, it was happening in real time. You know, it was happening in real time. They couldn't go back, like you said, they couldn't go back to bury sheet and read about it. Now, yes, they could be told, remember, because even told, even Moshe was trying to tell them things, but still they just couldn't hear it because in the moment that fear just would consume them sometimes. And we need to be very real that we are the offspring of those forefathers. So we will have some of those same tendencies and all mankind, the most I said that man's mind is evil continually. So the advantage that we have is we can actually look and we can read about it and see what happened. But in real time, even though we can still do that, how would we respond? You know, so how would we actually respond with faced with certain situations? And that's what we need to be asking. And, you know, I hate to use a watered down example, but I'm going to use one. Um, you have people that may watch uh, uh, any like sporting event, whether it's uh, boxing, uh, 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 basketball, whether it's track and field, oh, she lost a, uh, she, she was slower today, or uh, uh, he let so-and-so beat him. He should have beat this person, or he get tired already. The average person can't do one round. But we can sit back and critique, and we can look at the person saying, oh, we thought he's better than that. Oh, he let this bum beat him. The actual bum that's beating the person that you thought should have won, you can't fight one round yourself, and that bum will knock you out the first second of the fight. Because you're looking at other people's lives that at least have some form of conditioning, and we just on the sidelines looking and saying stuff. But but so we read it from the word that way. So my reason for saying that is to kind of title was I can Yaakov saying we, we can read what they did, but we still looking from the sidelines. When when you put in the game, and when the most I said it's your turn, how are we gonna respond? How are we gonna respond? And so the thing is, we should be trying to gain encouragement and trying to get our minds disciplined enough to make sure we are walking in this Torah 
to the point where our mind is conditioned that it become a way of life to us. Not something we just saying in front of people. Then when we're not in front of people, we live in different, but we doing this because we love it and we want to please our creator. So that when something comes up upon us, hopefully we will call scriptures to our remembrance or the Ruach will call scriptures to our remembrance that will make us stand strong on the word of the most high. But when we're looking at other people's lives, it's easy to say what you would or wouldn't do. But in real time, it hits different. And that's all I'm saying. And this is not trying to speak fear. This is also a word of encouragement. Let's not just always make statements about others, but let us condition our minds to be ready to serve the most high in whatever state we may be. As Paul said, well, if I'm based or bound, I'm going to serve the most high. Joseph, when he was in, in Egypt, you know, first he was in captivity. He still served the most high. Like we have to make sure that whatever state, state uh, status we may be in, that we're going to serve the most high. And Mishpaka, I'm going to tell you, it is not always easy. When troubles and tribulations come, it is not always easy. But as uh, as Miss Peggy was saying, but keep on, keep on, don't give up. Just never get, just never give up. Keep trusting in the most high and pushing towards tomorrow. So I can't yaku, I've told her about so much for your words, sir. I give all honor esteem to the most high Yah. May his name be esteemed always and forevermore. All right, Mishpaka, we're going to um, come to the point of closing at this time. Uh, uh, Toda Yah for us having the ability to be on um, together as a Mishpaka. Toda for all the comments that was made during every segment from the culture portion until now. It's been a, a delight to uh, fellowship with you all, Mishpaka, and studying the word of the Most High. But at this time, I'm going to ask uh, Sakane Yaquab if he can do the closing Tefla. Hello, Yah. Hello, Yah. Barakata Yahweh Malach Olam. Blessed are you, Yah, King everlasting, King of this universe. I come before you now, Abba Yah, your humble servant, your Yalad, seeking your face and giving you all esteem, all honor. And just thanking you, Abba Yah. Told our Rabbi Abba for this Shabbat day. Told our Rabbi Abba for the lesson that you blessed us with, Abba Yah. Told our for your long suffering and your patience with us, Abba Yah. Told our for your grace and your mercy. And I just ask Abba Yah, please, you continue to open our eyes, Abba Yah, and open our ears, Abba Yah, that we can see the path that you laid in front of us, Abba Yah, that we can see the traps and snares of your enemies who hate your Yaladim, Abba Yah, and that we can hear your instructions loud and clear. We can hear your warnings and we can hear your encouragements. Toda Rabba Abba for hearing and answering prayer in due season. Those that are afflicted in the body, Abba Yah, those that are vexed in their Ruach, those that are going through financial hardships, those that are alienated from friends and family, told our Rabba Abba for hearing and answering our prayers. And I just ask Abba Yah, please, you continue to put your hedge of protection around all your Yaladim that are scattered to the four corners of this earth. Continue to strengthen us, Abba Yah, with these examples. Continue to speak with us, Abba Yah, through your shepherds that you raised up as you promised. And I just ask Abba Yah, please, continue to be merciful when you judge us for falling short, for missing the mark, for transgression and trespassing against you and our neighbors. And those, Abba Yah, that will be traveling back, please give them traveling mercies, Abba Yah. Deliver them home safely. In all things, Tob and Ra, good and bad, every situation, Abba Yah, we give you thanks. Tob and Ra, Abba. Blessed are you, Yahweh. Blessed is your name, Yahweh. Blessed is he that comes in your name, Yahweh. Halal Yah, Halal Yah, Amen. Come on. Hallelujah, hallelujah, man, well, man. Ima Audrey, 
see your hand up. So uh, the floor is yours for the, your announcements, Ima. Hold on. Um, I'd just like to remind everyone that the Cash App is still down. However, the information for Zelle will be posted in Telegram for those who desire to contribute tithes and offerings or to our Help Enhance Ministry. Toda Reba, Ahab, and Shalom. Toda for your announcements, Ima. Just to add to the announcements, Ruth Ricard, you know the fall feast is uh, uh, coming upon us uh, very fast now. So um, beginning next uh, next month, you know, uh, next month is going to be the fall feast. So Yom Teruah, uh, which is Memorial of Blowing the Trumpets, Yom Kippur, which is Day of Atonement, and Kog Sukkot, uh, which is the Feast of Tabernacles, which is all coming upon us um, next month, Mr. Ricard. So start preparing yourselves for those dates. Um, also, if you have any questions about them, uh, you can visit the website. Uh, Zakane has the calendar up on the website. There's also on the website registration forms for Sukkot. For those who would like to attend Sukkot, so we have registration forms that will be on, on the website as well. Uh, also, if, uh, if any, you know, because we always want everyone to be able to make Yah's feast that desire to make the feast. So uh, if anyone need any assistance of any type to make it to Sukkot, uh, please let us know so that we can try to make arrangements early to assist anyone that may need assistance with uh with Sukkot, you know, uh, with making the Sukkot, because we want to make it possible for anyone that desires to gather together with the Mishpachah to observe Yah set apart Moedim and the feast and the feast of Sukkot is the next uh, uh next uh large gathering that we would have because you know there was certain feasts that you actually called up the three times a year and Sukkot was one of those times, you know. So uh, we're coming up on the season of Sukkot. We're looking forward to having a great time together, just out there worshiping the Most High and going to His Word together. So please, if you need to reach out to myself, Zakin Yaiqua, uh, 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 sorry, Hanan, uh, rather my Isha, or to Emo, uh, reach out to the Emas. Let us know how we can assist you uh, so we can make whatever arrangements because we would like for anyone that desires to actually be able to come together for fellowship to be able to do so. So don't let anything hinder you from making it, you know, regardless of what it is, you know, let's talk about it. So we can, as a family, can exhort and encourage one another to be together for the feast day. So with that, I give uh, all praise, honest esteem to the Most High Yah. May he make a way for all of us. Hallelujah. All right, Mr. Bakai, I love you all. Uh, I'm going to say a habit shalom to everyone. Shabbat shalom. Peace and blessings be upon each and every one of you. May the Most High be with you the rest of this day. Mr. Bakai. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.